here, right? In 68, now that we do sayings, someone brought up the uh, another one about money where is, is it red uh, hockey guy, hockey analyst? Craig Button. Craig Button. I was thinking of Red Buttons, the actor. Craig Button basically said, well, I would think one of the things Parisi has to consider is where can his wife find work in, in, in the city he's going to sign with. Situation, you know, Zach Parisi is getting married this summer, and you know his wife may want to work, and he, she may right. look at the Michigan area and go, well, wait a second, unemployment's really high oh, and everything. Absolutely. So these are significant factors. When he says, I'm, I want to have the most, I want to get the most information. Somehow that one didn't win, by the way. Yeah. That's something he goes, you know, we really wanted to sign with Detroit, but she can't get a job as an EMT there. Has okay. she found employment here? <laughs> well, in the that, yeah, right. Well, we've wondered that. Question. We've, we've yeah. wondered that so. If not, can we help her uh, find a job quickly? I don't know. She could probably help. Um, she could help sell uh, your board game. I need something. to help with yeah. fulfillment. Yeah. Fulfillment, right. You need all the help there. Oh, uh, we start with the West region, Tennessee. Uh, the Vikings victory region. Vi- well, Vikings victory region. Yeah, is the, is the, Pilot yeah. game. Vikings victory region. Okay. Let's begin with the number one seed in the Vikings victory region. Steve Kerr, the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, said this after acquiring Andrew Wiggins. Well, it's just great to, um, you know, to have uh, a player who we could put on LeBron and at least, you know, match up physically. (sighs) All right. Match physically. Uh, LeBron is 6'9", 250 pounds. Andrew Wiggins, 6'7", 205. So something like 45 pounds lighter than LeBron James. Something like yeah. If he can't match physically, what else could he match it? Yeah. Uh, sexually? Yeah, well, I, there I don't know that I either. Mean, I'm, you know, I'm a lot more interested in finding that out, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so Steve Kerr's the number one seed. He'll face the winner of the Saiyan game, correct, Enemy? Yeah, the number 16 seed, Joe Nelson, former uh, fan our, personality. Our Joe Nelson? Yes. yes. He tweeted... No Vikings fans actually give a crap if the Packers win or lose. Let's all be honest for a change. I've asked this question before. Do you think that for Viking fans, if the choice is Vikings win or Packers lose, they would take a Packers loss almost every time? Not every Viking fan, but there are many others that say, I would go ahead and give up a Vikings win just to make sure the Packers lose. Again. I know I fit that category. Uh, I think it's close. I think it's one and one. Hey, guys. <laughs> we got caught up looking at uh, watching that uh, K-Fan preposterous uh, statements there uh, as we were getting on air. That's some fun stuff for sure. Well, welcome, guys. You can see the Shamrocks on the screen. That's right. It's a Sham Rockin' Wednesday. We got a game of easy money coming up in less than 30 seconds. We are super pumped up for everything that's going on right now here on this Wednesday. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited to see what kind of jackpots we've already given out two jackpots today we are we set a goal out to give out um a total of six jackpots on the day i said yesterday before um we started giving out jackpots that i wanted to give out six jackpots on tuesday yep and six jackpots today we gave out six on tuesday that's right and now we got to follow up on the deal by giving out another uh another six today already given out two down Four more to go. Yep, let's get her done, guys. Here we go. We're rolling in our game of easy money. There's going to be a lot of moving and moving around um, on this leaderboard to start off. It always is that way. As we get into the second half of this 10-minute game, it's going to settle down a little bit. But we're going to see if uh, who is going to get that number one spot, who's going to win the most money out there, who's going to get the most points. It's a huge PGL night. Um, we had uh, – hopefully you guys uh, – uh, got onto Facebook, saw that live video. Uh, the event of Minnesota happened uh, during the break. We had intern John signing up for his PGL account, and the you know it was everybody was talking about. There was controversy. There had been fights. Uh, families had had been split in two uh, on could he get it done in 15 seconds or less. Yes, I and took the under. You took the under. You had belief. You'd been training with him. You were kind of his. His mentor in yes, the process. Yes, I, I thought I thought of myself as that. Yeah, and uh, trying to uh, bring him through all of the process that it was. I went with the over. Tony went with the over. Uh, Nikki went with the. I just hope everyone gets along. Uh, good job, John. Um, and that's what we expect. That's why we're Nikki's angels because she is super nice person. Um, and uh, but 
at the end of the day, a really nice effort by Intern John. You can check out the video on Facebook. Go to our Pilot Games page and you can see it in all its glory. His uh, thumbs are moving uh, just uh, rapidly, but you can see how easy it is to sign up for a PGL account because he got it done in what, 26 seconds? Yeah, 26 seconds. 26 seconds. And he got fumbled around uh, with one of the screens and that's what slowed him up. I think he could have got it done in a faster time if things wouldn't have got uh, moved around, but he did it on his phone. Uh, it was all thumb action and a nice job by intern John. Yeah, I thought maybe the, the if you tried the computer approach, you might be able to get it done quicker. Yeah, but uh, that's that's personal preference. Uh, well, maybe if we ever have another intern, uh, we'll have them do it on the computer. Yeah, see how it works. Well, we're about halfway done with plays on half of these uh, people. Um, Rooster is in first place right now with uh, 16,000 points. Now 17. We got Bad Flop Bob in second, one of our favorite players. Uh, Jay Zam in uh, third. Fourth is Abby. Fifth is Jay, Jay Mace. Uh, sixth place, Abby. Seventh place, D Sense. And eighth place, OD18. And ninth place is Mike. Mike, I think, is the same Mike that won a jackpot earlier today. Yeah, that might be. Uh, during Jackpot Hunter, we had uh, Mike over at Clay's. Um, he, he was able to pull himself away those from those great food specials they have going on over at oh, Clay's yeah. long enough to win a jackpot, winning 4400 Dollars. Um, it was super, super awesome. Uh, we also had in Jackpot Hunter, we had Cece, one of our longtime great players, uh, win a Jackpot Hunter uh, uh, as well over at Frankie's Bar, um, winning $855. So two great jackpots going on out there. Um, good to see Mike back in here on Easy Money on a Sham Rockin' Wednesday. Now, when I saw that Jay Zam name, that was the first time I've seen Jay Zam. Mm -hmm. uh, now in fourth place, Boone Me Three, top player, jumping into second place. Is which, uh, but Jay Zam, um, that sounds like a superhero. I'm just wondering if that's uh, like a bingo superhero of some sort. It, it um, has to be like a, a, yeah. a, a. It's like J is for jackpots. Yeah, and Jazam. It's kind of like Shazam, but it's for jackpots, and it's Jazam. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Well, a lot. Uh, well, uh, we have a bunch of locations. Uh, matched up the, uh, for uh, oh. this uh, Sham Rockin' Wednesday. Yeah, that's right, because it is the premiere right now of Prime Time Bets. Can't believe it. I, we've been waiting for it. It's happening. Here we go. Well, we've got Bedrock up against Titans uh, Sports Saloon. Uh, Titans Sports Saloon gets um, over almost 87 thousand points because of the great night that bedrock turned in last week oh yeah bedrock was the number one location last week titan sports saloon the number 10 location so uh in the matchups it's the number one seed versus the number 10 seed uh super tight oh i, I probably have to get into another screen just to fix that uh scroll Oh yeah, I'm enjoying kind of the, the 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 compilation of text down there, but some of the um, players might not find that as entertaining. Well, we'll be on this blue screen, and then we'll reset that text on the bottom. Hopefully, it gets fixed. Um, let's Here see, and there it is. It looks like it's rolling through. It's rolling, but we jumped out. Unfortunately, we jumped out of that uh, easy money game. We'll see what happens uh, when we hit the three. It jumped us out. Nope. There it is. There we go. We're back in. We're back in. All right. Um, yeah, see, I'd press the two button. Oh, instead of the three. Instead of the three, two uh, puts you to the enrolling screen. Yeah. Three puts you into the game. There uh, we go. Well, they're in, uh, in first place. We got Booger. Second place, Hannah. Third place, uh Yeah, we got different names, different amounts, this, no amounts. And uh, we got. I don't know if this is the right one because we I still have 17, so. se 17 yeah, I minutes think left. We're in a weird uh, multiverse uh, place at the moment. We will see where. Uh, okay, Tony's coming in. So, uh, yeah, bear with us here for just a second as we figure out all these technical difficulties. Um, we are, uh, yeah. We are in a cosmic loop that has been confirmed um, as we enter World X. 
uh, we'll let you know all that happens and uh, who the winners are here in World X. Um, but we'll check back in with uh, our normal world in Minnesota here in just a few moments as uh, our superhero, Tony, comes in and fixes oh, yeah. all the problems. As we try, to f we try to figure out which of these locations are going to win in those matchups. Our first yeah. matchup is uh, the number one location versus the number 10 location. Yep. Um, it's uh, Bedrock versus Titan Sports Saloon. Yes. I picked Titan Sports Saloon. I picked them because they're the number one location in Vikings Bingo. I think they don't like hearing that they're the number 10 seed. Okay. Oh, I need to go to the... I don't know if that's us that does that. I don't know. I'll ask Tony. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. you picked uh, Titans, and we, we love Titans Sports Saloon. And so... Oh, he's doing it. So, all right. Sorry, Tony. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, on prime, uh, on prime time bets. So, uh, yeah, I went with bedrock, uh, just because they knocked it out of the park last Wednesday and, uh, we'll see how that all turns out. Okay. Um, well, uh, since we have all these technical difficulties, we're going to go, go take a quick break and we'll be right back to do more, uh, sham rockin' Wednesday yeah. after this quick break. Absolutely. Oh, okay, game's done in 10 seconds, so. Oh, hey. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are back with you guys. Uh, we're going to get you that information about who won in that easy money first game of our Sham Rockin' Wednesdays. We're super glad to be with you guys as we're getting enrolled in this game of Pride of Minnesota. And uh, like I said, we'll get you all those results. We were oh, talking yeah. about prime time bets you went with uh titans sports saloon i went with bedrock uh you get because you went with uh uh titan sports saloon you get uh 86,820 points uh just for playing and we'll see what happens with that one yeah and then we said flip flop on picking favorites uh between the matchup in neeson's gaylord versus versus aardvark's bar and grill i chose neeson's gaylord the fave the favorite in the matchup, the number two location in uh, in last week's uh, Wild Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and some huge players playing and, yeah, over there. No, Neeson's I was talking game. about power couples is the reason I chose it. And it's the power couple of Michelob and Rakisha that really drove me to choose uh, Neeson's Gaylord as the favorite, even though they have uh, – they're a little behind. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I went with the the luck of the great name Ardvarks, uh, just one of the one of our favorite names of uh, of locations out there, and so I went with that. And uh, for the good, I get uh, actually this time I get uh, thirty nine thousand one hundred ninety points. Oh. Well, and then the next matchup is American Legion Moorhead versus VFW Austin. I chose the underdog, VFW Austin. I wouldn't consider them an undo underdog in Hard PGL to call them an underdog. because they're home of Forget You D, Sarah Honey, and many more elite players that play uh, at VFW Austin. But uh, those uh, just I don't I don't see them uh, having a low scoring week just like they had last week. And uh, I expect him to come out and have a big week this week. Well, and I would have went along with that until I saw it was American Legion Moorhead. And this is the 
102nd uh, birthday of American Legion. So I had to uh, give up the 36,550 points to go with the birthday uh, charity oh, and yeah. uh, take that American Legion over in Moorhead. We'll see how that works out. They've got some great players like Jackie and Penguin in DLAN 87 over there in American Legion. Oh, yeah. Then uh, uh, another matchup, Sax versus Kim's Saloon. Who'd you pick in that? I went Kim's Saloon because I saw Big Bird and Missy and Tony's out there playing, and that is always a good bet to bet on those kind of players. Oh, yeah. I see Big Bird playing all the time. Well, I went Sax because uh, – uh, they're the favorite. They are the um, number four location in uh, uh, last week, and I think they're going to continue their dominance and uh, uh, be the uh, be the over. Uh, on the point total. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the next matchup, it's one for the ages. It's five versus six. It's Mills Lounge versus Otter Tail Supper Club. I mean, this one, is, I think, is going to be a photo finish. Um, you went with Otter Tail, and yeah. I went with Mills Lounge. Mills Lounge has got Big Mama, Lulu, uh, Patty P out there playing. So a bunch of folks out there. Um, so we'll see. I had to give up 6,640 points because. Yeah, but it's a tight one. And uh, anyone could win. Well, we got those winners from the easy money game. Uh, in uh, first, in 10th uh, place, it was uh, uh, Decent's. Uh, at uh, the Red Goat. Then uh, Jay Zam at uh, Howie's Bar and Grill in ninth place. In eighth place, we got Happy Joy at uh, Boulevard Bar and Grill. Happy in seventh Happy place, <laughs> sorry, a good song. It's yeah, a good song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in uh, in uh, seventh place, we got Sky at uh, Rounders. In sixth place, uh, FJK at um, uh, Onim. On the Anamia Vets uh, Club, uh, in fifth place, Bad Flop Bob at American Legion Fridley. In fourth place, Jay Jay Mace at uh, Frontier Lounge. In third place, Boom uh, Me Three at uh, Sherburn Municipal uh, Liquor Store. And in second place, we got O'Malley's. Yeah, we lost that screen. I'm not sure what happened there. The technical difficulties are continuing. Yeah, well, sorry. Go uh, ahead. at O'Malley's, and uh, um, then in first place we have uh, Rooster at uh, Paradise Resort Bar and Grill, uh, winning that first place prize in Easy Money, and we're about thirty seconds to get enrolled in this game of Pride of Minnesota. Enter John Cusey if uh, if that cords all the way up in that TV. For some reason, we're losing signal on that, uh, on our monitor there. Huh, all right. All right, well, uh, we are rolling into this game of Pride of Minnesota. We're excited to be with you guys for this next game. We do, uh, we've been talking all about prime time bets and our premiere of that going on. And uh, as we get rolling here in this game, you can watch us, of course, on Pilot TV at the location you're at. You can also watch us on the Player Connect app. And you can also uh, check us out at pilotgames.com slash pilot tv we also stream live on the twitch app we're under the channel name mega soda so uh you can watch us on any of those places uh we love on the on the apps like our player connect app where you can chat right with us uh, we'll send you some luck if you do so and uh what a better day to <coughs> sorry to get set some luck oh yeah they're not a share rock and wednesday well we're gonna take a quick break uh to <laughs> Oh, wait, never mind. We don't need that break anymore because oh. uh, uh, we have the things uh, popping up now. Our, our script wasn't popping up on our script page, and uh, so we were going to figure that out. But now it is back up and running. And I'm breathing again, so that's good. That's yeah. all positives. Yeah. Hey, intern John, I mean, just, uh, you know, nice job on the live video on Facebook tonight and then uh, getting – uh, the, the the program content information back up on the screen. I mean, it, I guess 
we're gonna have to quit calling him intern John and make him uh, uh, producer John. Boom, we are we dub Sir John, producer John, and uh, now uh, he has moved his uh, title over. Even though we have no right to do so, we have now made him producer John. We and had no right to call him intern John. It was probably inappropriate, but uh, <laughs> from the get go. But here we go. Uh, We've given out so many jackpots this season. Oh, I know it. So many already. We're at a uh, hundred and one uh, going into today. Yeah. Um, and that's on the low end because we still haven't put in a couple jackpots. Exactly. Um, and then uh, twenty three for the week. We've already given out two today, so that makes it twenty five pretty much for the week. Yeah, twenty five for the week. Twenty one hundred three for the for the, for the season. season. Just yeah. been giving out jackpots like crazy we gave out six on tuesday and uh we're planning on trying to give out six on uh this lovely wednesday absolutely we are uh locked in ready to get it done um and we're gonna see how it all plays out well it's all fighting for pgl points and uh so if we're trying to give out a lot of jackpots that means a lot of pgl points on the line and what should you have if you uh yeah, you need a PGL. Uh, uh, you need to be signed up as a member of our league. You go to pgl.world and you sign up. We've just proven it on the Facebook Live video. If you haven't seen it on your phone, you can sign up in 26 seconds if you have the thumbs of of producer john um then you can get that done in 26 seconds uh pgl players compete for points and they have access to insider information including a monthly newsletter uh that really has a ton of great information in it pgl.world sign up today oh yeah no definitely all those pgl players are all having so much fun competing for those points. Oh, yeah, and that insider cool. information gives you just that little bit of uh, edge in getting that uh, those big wins in bingo. Yeah, well, I see, folks, uh, we're ro roaming the halls here on the mothership as we're flying around the skies. Um, you know, I'll see people as the, as the newsletter's almost done. People are sweating. They're, 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 they're all, you know, they're drinking tons of coffee, just trying to get all the best information possible into that newsletter before it goes out and so people around here just working crazy hard well we're about to hit the halfway point here on this game of pride of minnesota we got kyle sitting in first place over at lucky's saloon in swanville we've got msb in sixth hov in seventh we got jazam over there in eighth and stacy uh iag um in ninth in second place it's chris in third place we got Bosman uh, in fourth, Boone Me three, and in fifth place, Patrick. We got Nikki um, checking in, saying hot off the press. Primetime bet results: American Legion Monticello won a uh, eleven thousand and seventy points against our place on third, having zero. Oh, all right, all right. Well, we'll keep checking in as we get information about those prime time bets and where all that sits. Well, uh, we uh, as we roll through this uh, game, um, well, where is uh, where are we sitting on our jackpot hunter standings coming into today? Oh, well, we have a crazy jackpot hunter standings. Uh, in sixth place, we have a tie between Thirsty and Bad Flop Bob at... Uh, uh, Thirsty's playing at Shady's rail uh, rail side right in Rice. Bad flop Bob in American Legion Fridley. In fifth place, we got Slappy at Carboni's Pizza CR Billiards. In fourth place, Mrs. T at Riverboat Depot in Sartell. Then also in Riverboat Depot in Sartell, we got a two-way tie in second place between Mrs. Yags and Yags 370. Then in first place, longtime first place holder for the past two weeks. I think has been in first place. AK Lucky playing at the Sunset Grill in Spring Lake Park. Well, this is in as well. Neeson's Gaylord sitting at 8,840 points. Uh, VFW Austin at zero points currently. Um, so those are just a couple more of our locations that are competing in those prime time bets uh, with uh, their so point totals. We'll see where that all shakes out. Maybe a location that doesn't have any points right now that comes and just really oh, yeah. brings it uh, as we keep moving 
through these games. Kyle still sitting uh, in first place out there. We'll see as we keep on rolling. We'll check back in, go through that whole top nine here in just a few minutes. But let me give you those. You just did the uh, – the yeah, I did the player standings. standings. Oh, you did the player. Let me hit those locations in Jackpot Hunter. In ninth place, we got American Legion Fridley. In sixth place, we got a three way tie between Eagles, Wantana, the Sunset Grill in Spring Lake Park, and South Street Saloon in Mankato. In fifth place, we got Riverboat Depot in Sartell. Then in third place, we've got a tie between American Legion Monticello and Moe's in Moundsview. Just entered our 25,000 point club in Jackpot Hunter, now in third place, all tied up. Then tied up also in first place is Carboni's Pizza, CR Billiards in Coon Rapids and VFW Austin, both sitting with 30,000 points. So uh, it's it's a tight race there in Jackpot Hunter. Oh, yeah, that top four, super close. That top two, Battle of the Champions. Uh, just uh, super interesting in that Jackpot Hunter standings. For sure. And uh, can't wait to see the updated standings when we come in tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be back here with you guys uh, tomorrow at lunchtime for some Vikings bingo i don't want to rush away this night this is uh feels like just one of the biggest nights of the year here on a sham rock and wednesday oh, yeah. hope you guys are having a great saint patty's day drinking some green beer um or maybe drinking some guinness or having that guinness beef stew in the Ooh. bread bowl uh yeah we heard about that that I've been just thinking about that ever since so um i can't get it off the mind i don't know what i'm going to do with that um uh, maybe just maybe just cry myself to sleep but um because i can't get access to it but here we are we're a minute left in here let's take a look at these standings we got kyle in first place uh behesman in second amanda 93 in third we had boone me three in fourth in sixth place we got patrick in seventh we got frog hair in eighth we got rick Rico. and in ninth we got mom data yeah and let's see what who's in that fifth place spot it's Chris over at Tony's Saloon. Well, a lot of really good players right there, and it looks like they are all out of plays. And so uh, it looks like it's going to be solidified. These may be the standings unless someone from outside the top ten can make their way in and shake things up. Well, the tabulators will be the final determinators on that. Well, uh, after we get this, uh, uh, we get these final tallies here on this game of Pride of Minnesota. We'll be jumping in, getting enrolled in our next game, which is Ice Fishing Derby. You're one of your favorites, one of ours, and we're excited about getting out there to Big Wampum Lake with you guys and seeing uh, all the super fun. What lures you're picking, uh, which buddy you choose. We had a surprise last Wednesday with uh, with Susie outperforming Stu in the buddy list um is a huge upset oh, last yeah. night things got back to normal on megasota game night Stu was number one but maybe wednesdays is not Stu's a night we will see uh as everything continues to shake out here but uh there it is kyle at at the lucky saloon in swansville winning 302 dollars that's a great victory for kyle um and now we are getting rolled in one of my favorite games, Ice Fishing Derby. Yeah, hard to top Ice Fishing Derby. And we know our fans. I mean, we did a bunch of uh, Facebook uh, bracket challenges. Oh, yeah. And Ice Fishing Derby and Fishing Derby both perform very well oh, in those. Always do. Well, we have a wonderful Titans, uh, I mean, uh, Vikings uh, uh Viking standings yes. with a lot of uh, really good players in it. So I'm going to go over those uh, top 10 players in Vikings bingo. In 10th place, Donke. 9th place, Vinny. In 8th place, Lucky Tim. 7th place, Mrs. T. 6th place, Bryzo. And then in 5th place, that's where the big shakeup is. It's Joni in 5th place playing at Mama T's Castle Tap. Joni was tied with Donke mm. at 23,000 points. Donkey still at 23,000 points, but Joni having an absolute dominant yesterday uh, lunchtime, moving her all the way up to fifth place spot. I wonder if that's going to motivate Donkey to kick that 23,000 to the side and get some more points. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised there. In fourth place, we got Mad Dog. Third place, Jack Pine. Second place, Alice. And then in first place, we have Elsa at Titan Sports Saloon with a total score of 75,000 points. 
those players have been crushing it out there. Well, let's take a look at those locations in the Vikings bingo that have been doing just an amazing job all over the state of Minnesota. In 10th place, we've got American Legion Shakopee. In 8th place, we got a tie between VFW Spring Lake Park and Mama T's Castle Tap in Little Canada. In 7th place, Carboni's Pizza CR Billiards right there in Coon Rapids. In 6th place, Frankie's Bar in St. Paul Park. In 5th place, Monticello VFW. In fourth place, St. Paul Park Legion. In third place, Riverboat Depot in Sartell. In second place, uh, with 128,000 points, Sue's Penalty Box in Eveleth. And in first place, Titan Sports Saloon in Oakdale with 200,210 points. Wow. Amazing. Those folks crushed it. We also have a top 10 uh, as we finished with that Pride of Minnesota, that final uh, call on that Pride of Minnesota game. We had Joe Dearn at the Cabin Bar in 10th place, Mom Data in, at JC's Bar and Grill in 9th, Rico at American Legion Moorhead in 8th, Frog Hair at the C Cabin Bar in 7th, Patrick at Backyard Bar and Grill in 6th, in fifth place, Chris at Tony's Saloon. In fourth, Boon Me 3 at Sherburn Municipal Liquor. Amanda 93 at Beck's Pub in third. Uh, Bessman at Flame Bar is second. And our number one player in Pride of Minnesota was Kyle at Lucky's Saloon. Yeah, a bunch of awesome players right there. We're uh, just under uh, two minutes and 20 seconds left to get enrolled in this game of ice fishing derby so get enrolled press play because it's going to be a super fun uh games of ice fishing derby and uh we're going to love to see who is going to be the number one buddy is it going to be Stu? is it going to be suds is it going to be Susie? or is it going to be uh steve i'll tell you what if it was steve that would be the biggest uh upset of all i was trying to get it to be steve steve last time yeah didn't quite work out um, uh, but uh, I was glad to see someone other than Stu get the win. Yes, that's, for that was sure. my really my only goal was to have it be not Stu because yes. I just wanted to see see someone else get the win. Absolutely, In majority. Now it's time to change up the lures. Yes, because the lure is always that top uh, that top left lure yeah. in the corner of all of our lures. Yes, and then uh, I'm gonna hope it's one of the little random lures in the middle. I, I, I'm, I'm rooting for the millworms. Uh, the I just, millworms. Yeah. That's a good choice. Yeah, we'll see what happens. They are always at the bottom of the list in selection, but I think they're an actually great uh, yeah, lure. Yeah, yeah. You, like you think they're going to catch some fish. Yeah, I think so. I, I completely agree as well. Well, this we're having a blast on a uh, sham rocking Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, just a, under a minute to get enrolled in this ice fishing derby. Let's go over uh, what we're going to be earning all tonight. Yeah. And that's PGL points for these PGL standings. Absolutely. Well, uh, we've got some uh, top players and locations in the state of Minnesota. A lot of them out here, I would guess, most of them out here getting after it again here tonight. In 10th place, we got Lucky. In 9th place, Keeves. In 8th place, Nixon. In 7th place, Ramrod. 6th place, Sloppy. In 5th place, Bones. In 4th place, Louie. In 3rd place, Fishy24. In 2nd place, moving way up. Our big mover last week, staying after Megasota game night. In 2nd place, Verizo. And been holding on to first place for quite a while now here in season nine is Lou Bear over at the St. James Eagles. Nice job to all of our top ten players. Yeah, I mean, Lou Bear just holding on to that first place spot. Um, Bryzo with the absolute rise. I'm very interested to see what these standings are going to come out looking like tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be exciting. Oh, yeah. Well, here are those uh, location standings um, in uh, PGL. Uh, make sure you uh, get uh, uh, get those plays in in the next 30 minutes because uh, there's going to be some big money on the line, as you can see in that scrolling red bar. Well, uh, in 10th place is the Wilderness Bar in Big Fork. Then in 9th place, the Deer Stand in Deerwood. 8th place, Vic's Bar and Grill in Moorhead. 7th place, Neeson's Gaylord. 
In sixth place, Sherry Sports Saloon in Chatfield. In fifth place, Neighborhood Tavern in Effie. In fourth place, Valley Lanes in Spring Valley. In third place, Roseville VFW. In second place, Cabin Bar in Nicolette. And then in first place is VFW Northfield with a really good score of uh, uh, 1,924,000. One hundred and five points. That's a lot of points. Uh, really killing it with the point total They're right there. Up. They could uh, conceivably get into the two million point club tonight during uh, this Shamrockin' Wednesday. We'll see if that could happen. Uh, just a little check in on primetime bets. Uh, see what's going on out there. American Legion Moorhead now with forty two thousand points. Neeson's Gaylord now with 19,000 points. So uh, just a couple of just heads up on some of those point totals out there uh, as we're moving through a, uh, yeah, a premiere of prime time bets pitting top locations um, against each other, and we'll see how that all shakes out. Well, since today is not a wild Wednesday, um, it would be a, a little wrong for us not to go over what happened last night with the Minnesota Wild. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm itching for a little wild. We, we we usually get it right now, you oh, know, yeah. while we're playing some uh, Wild Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, um, we got – the news just keeps on being good. Oh, yeah. Well, we had a, another great win um, uh, last night. Uh, uh, Capo uh, Kaovin uh, uh, made 31 saves, and uh, the Minnesota uh, and the Minnesota Wild shut out the Arizona Coyotes for the second time in three games on Tuesday. Um, the shutout was his second in NHL and extended his winning streak to nine games. He's already set the rookie record, and he's just continues to put it out there. Yeah, he's been doing a really great job. I mean, our rookie goal goaltender is great and I don't think it's a um you know between our two goaltenders it's not a who's who's the who's no. the guy uh I think they're both the guy they're both playing really well and so it's great when you got two great goalies um they seem to be working well with one another and being able to uh work in and out of the lineup and doing a great job well it's proven in our record we're 18 8 and 1 I don't think many of us uh would have saw that coming before the season started but we're sitting in second place in the the West and we got the Avalanche in third place coming up tomorrow night so they're 17 8 and 2 so they're just uh, just a little bit behind us so this is gonna be a big huge game for us tomorrow night that game is the puck is going to drop at 8 p.m. so uh, make sure you're ready to uh, to watch our wild and a great way to celebrate that while you're watching the wild game is play our latest e-tabs game uh, that we partnered up with the Minnesota wild to do and that's the let's go wild game it's been the number one e-tab game in the state of Minnesota since we released that and it also seems to just have brought uh, our Minnesota wild a great luck oh yeah it has I mean, they have just been winning, winning, winning. Uh, that uh, at one point I thought it was, oh, they got themselves together. Uh, the COVID break really brought them together. Now I'm starting to believe that it's the Minnesota Wild uh, Let's Go Wild game because they just keep on winning. And uh, I think it's just proving that they're just a really good team now. And that young talent that they brought in uh, this year has just really panned out for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, one of the players we talked about earlier in the broadcast is right now in first place out there. It's Bones, one of our favorite players over at Duffy's Bar and Grill, uh, sitting in first place. Good to see you out there, Bones. Well, um, speaking of sports, uh, I'm getting pretty excited for the uh, baseball season to come. Oh, yeah. If I was a betting man and I had to go to Vegas and make, make some bets, yeah. I'm betting on the Twins right now because they are severely, severely underrated in Vegas odds right now. Absolutely. I mean, everyone's thinking this is the White Sox this year. And uh, and I say don't count out the Twins. I think it's John a Mirage that they've won, uh, you know, the, the pennant there for the last two oh, years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just uh, – you know, just because the the postseason has we haven't fared well, doesn't mean you give up on them. I think they've made some nice moves in the off season, keeping some of their uh, top players, uh, looking and, and adding some talent to it as well. I think they're going to probably uh, continue to do that, that as the season rolls on. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll yeah. see where that all goes. They have some really nice 
trade capital um, in their developmental leagues as well. Yep. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they make a move for a bigger name, uh, especially in their uh, pitching unit. Yeah. And uh, I would uh, be super happy to see the Twins uh, make a move like that, um, get that guy that can close out a game in a playoff situation. Yeah. Uh, uh, really uh, like what the Twins have done this offseason, and uh, really just maintaining the roster was the biggest thing for me. Yeah, we're kind of moving towards that opening day roster. Of course, that'll be against the Brewers over in Milwaukee on April 1st. Uh, as we keep on round that out, they had a second round of cuts on Monday, I know, and uh, we're just getting closer and closer to that uh, 40-man roster um, on opening day. We'll see where oh, that yeah. all uh, ends up, but uh, pretty exciting times. Oh, yeah. So. What What's super exciting is uh, NFL stuff right now. Absolutely. Oh, you got, you got free of. agency just start. Well, legal tampering period yep. is technically what's called just yep. starting up yesterday. Two days ago. Two no, days ago. Two yep. days ago. Yep. Yep. Just starting up two days ago on Monday. Um, and already things have been going really well for the Vikings. Yeah, they really have. So uh, I thought the Vikings did – I mean, you know, they have areas of need, right? You know, yes. And that was obvious. And one of those areas was in the center of the defense, right on the defensive line. They needed to shore some things up. I think they did something really nice here in this short uh, free agency period uh, already. Yeah, while uh, while the uh, Giants uh, they picked up uh, Giants Dalvin Tomlinson, while the Giants use Dalvin Tomlinson as a nose tackle, the Vikings will uh, most likely employ Tomlinson as a three tech um, uh, because the team already has um, uh, Michael Pierce to play nose tackle. Tomlinson will bring a uh, instant legitimacy to the spot, particularly with uh, stuffing the run. Um, he is a big gap plugging body. Body that has a presence to help the Vikes, Vikes edge uh, rushing situation um, as long as uh, Daniel Hunter returns. I think he was a, he's a great pickup. He has a, He's one of those bigger guys that have the nice quick twitch movement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, isn't quite fast top speed, but great quick twitch. Is, and that's what you're looking for out of a D tackle. Yeah. And, uh, and he's just that run stopping guy, especially if you have Daniel Hunter back. You pairing Daniel, uh, Dalvin Thomas and Michael Pierce, it's going to give a lot of uh, a lot less responsibilities in the run game to our linebackers and Anthony Barr and uh, Kendricks. Yep. I think they'll be able to play a little bit more freely and instinctively. Yep. And uh, and I really uh, really like that pickup. No, I think that's a perfect fit for Mike uh, Zimmer's uh, defense, and we'll see how that all continues to unfold here as the offseason goes. It doesn't look like uh, Vikings are going to sit on their hands during this uh, free agency period. They're looking to make some moves, and then we'll see where that leads with the draft as well uh, as, uh, you know, as we keep on getting – Closer and closer uh, um, as that. And they weren't done uh, I as far as the defensive line uh, in free agency, were they? Oh, I was just – I was looking up uh, – up, uh, uh, if, if you're talking about the thing I just looked up. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, uh, Pat Williams. He was a part of uh, Williams Wall oh. um, in an old old, uh, old uh, Vikings defensive line. Yeah. And someone made the comp of uh, – I saw online of uh, someone saying that these two D tackles, it's the, it's the Williams Wall all oh. over again. And, uh, yeah. and so now I'm trying to – I think it was back when they paired up Kevin Williams and Pat Williams together at the defensive tackle position. Okay, yeah. And they called it Williams Wall. Yeah. And uh, so they're saying that uh, uh, Dalvin Thomas and uh, Michael Pierce are now the new Williams Wall. Oh, okay, okay, yep, yep. But they did pick up some other uh, defensive linemen here uh, already. Uh, before. It was, oh, yeah, Stefan. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. Yeah, well, I, I brought it up, so then I'm, I'm talking about it, and I should be more prepared on that. But, I, uh, um, but yeah, no, I think – and he's a former Viking, so he understands the system. He can come back in and uh, be a, a quick uh, help as well. So they're really tightening up that defensive line uh, and uh, getting that in a good place. It's going to be huge if they can, uh, can re-sign um, – is Hunter, keep him in the fold. 
um, and uh, and make sure that he's happy and uh, and in uh, the purple and gold. So, oh yeah, no, yeah. I I really hope that they can get Daniel Hunter uh, on the field playing this year because I just uh, I do think he is one of the best edge rush edge defenders in the entire NFL, and uh, him paired up with those two run stopping guys is going to be just perfect matchup. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Bones still sitting in first place as we hit that. Not 18. a lot of plays played either. No, no, Bones has got some plays left to go for sure. So, um, and yeah, Bones, one of those longtime PGL players, knows how to play the game. There's Flash Daddy. Flash Daddy has won some jackpots in the past. So, uh, Flash Daddy, no uh, stranger to big wins in second place. Um, there's Gumby out there at uh, Mustang Sally's in uh, sixth place. Mustang Sally. All right, I, that's my uh, to, lyrical uh, contribution to the broadcast. You mean lyrical genius? Yes. Your lyrical genius. <laughs> well, um, we had a little bit of Timberwolves action last night. Yes. Um, well, it didn't go great uh, as in a uh, win-loss uh, th uh, thought process. Uh, the Lakers beat the Wolves uh, 137 to 121 with LeBron getting his 99th triple-double. You say it like that. It doesn't sound like a great loss. No. But in my opinion, I thought it was a, a great loss, actually. Carl Anthony, Ta uh, Carl Anthony Towns and, and Anthony Edwards both scored 29 points wow. apiece. Uh, yeah. Really, um, I've been seeing Anthony Edwards' averages just go up every single week, and I think he's really finding his rhythm as a scorer. Um, uh, uh, a piece the Timberwolves who had won the two of their last three games for the first time since December uh, Minnesota made 52 uh, percent of the shots against uh, one of the NBA's best defensive teams but allowed eight uh, Lakers to score at least eight points apiece. Uh, so our defense wasn't great, but we were offensively very efficient uh, against a very good defensive team. I think if you can score 121 points against the Lakers, that's a good offensive night. They just got to tighten up the defensive side side of the ball but I like what's been happening kind of since last weekend kind of after the all-star break what Chris Finch has been able to do you know new into his era um, it looks like he's getting some uh, some better things Ex going especially yeah. it seems like he's using Anthony Edwards as the number one scoring option mm -hmm. and he's saying Carl Anthony Towns will get that 29 no matter what yes he, yes. th it doesn't matter where if he's if he's get, not getting the ball he's good enough that that he will just score 29 points off of 19 shots and and just be able to do that kind of efficiency uh, from Carl Anthony Townsend. He's saying, Anthony Edwards, I need you to develop to be one of the best scorers in the league. Uh, and I think that that's, he's, he's stepping up to the challenge and uh, easily could see this being a huge turning point in Anthony Edwards' career. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, when he starts scoring these 25-plus point games, if he can continue on that and never really break from it uh i think that he's going to end up being one of the elite scores in our uh in the league yeah no he i, I really like what he brings athletically um i like the, that he's getting some confidence as a rookie you know that's going to go a long way for him developing very dwayne know. wade type skill set yes yes no, and I mean, obviously, if he can become Dwayne Wade, I mean, that's uh, that would oh. be lights out. But uh, we'll see if I mean, that comes to I fruition, mean, if but. anything, I, I, I can say this. I have seen a more impressive dunk come from Anthony Edwards than I've seen from Dwayne Wade. That's true. Uh, I mean, that dunk he oh, had. I don't know. But that Verjao dunk where Dwayne Wade dunks over Anderson Verjao. Oh. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Anderson Verjao was on the Cavs. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Dwayne Wade, he drives the middle. Um and just absolutely clobbers uh, Anderson Verjao. So it's a, it, I, I don't know if I can keep that statement to be true, but uh, I, I, I do think that that dunk was, was one of the most impressive dunks I've ever seen. This may be uh, this may be just uh, insider uh, talk here uh, for the for the Minnesota crowd. But speaking of dunks, uh, your brother last night in his uh, in his basketball game, uh, as they did move to uh, twelve or maybe it's thirteen and one now on the season. Okay. they're ranked sixth in the state, so they're 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 having a nice nice season. Yeah. But uh, you know, thought uh, you know his buddy uh, Zach. 
uh, he saw him dry, you know, running towards, you know, cutting to the lane as he had the ball in. So he tried a little oops, uh, you know, to uh, to him. To they were trying to team up for the slam dunk. Yeah. But um, I think that um, that maybe uh, Gabe thought that Zach had the athleticism of Anthony Edwards, so he threw the ball way up there. And uh, and I, I had explained to him la- after the after the game, the two of them stopped by the house. Yeah. Uh, after and I was like, really, what you got to do for Zach to be able to slam that thing? And this is true for most high school uh-huh. uh, dunkers that aren't the athleticism of an Anthony Edwards. Is you basically got to make a shot, and then they just kind of push it down. Exactly. As they go on, you know, you can't do a where you grab it and then they tam- tomahawk slam it. No. That's just not gonna happen. So. Uh, yeah, the oops dunk combination did not go Didn't well. work out. I'm sure the coach definitely had something to say to uh, <laughs> Gabe afterwards. But uh, definitely uh, uh, I would have been cheering it on wholeheartedly. Uh, but that's why I didn't play when I played basketball. Well, it's funny. I said, you know, they're playing some uh, lesser competition the next couple games before they go into the playoffs. And I was mm-hmm. like, that's a great opportunity for you guys to do it. And he goes, well, I wouldn't even want to do it against those teams. I'm like – yeah, you'd like to get a slam dunk on any team. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. If you didn't know, we're a really tiny school that doesn't have a lot of kids that can slam dunk it. And uh, so uh, so if, yeah. if anybody slam dunked it, it would be huge any news. Game, it'd be huge news. Uh, the whole town would be talking about it. Well, um, we've got some great national days and a great preposterous uh, statement uh, tournament. Uh, oh, yeah. A couple of things to talk about uh, as we roll into the last 12 minutes of this ice fishing derby um at some point maybe we i wonder i'll 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 see if uh nikki or tony can pull it up for us maybe we can get a look at those um those lures or those uh um oh yeah or the buddies on who's fishing with who but um but let's uh take a look at this preposterous statement um and uh since since we we did i'll we'll reverse it from the happy hour show okay uh i'll tell about uh, uh Marquise Valdez Scantling, um, he his preposterous statement was on the best receivers of all time. Now, as I first start this out, you're gonna think, ah, I don't see what's preposterous. So first he said Randy Moss. Okay, I'm gonna. I think that's Good. legitimate. Yeah. Great. Julio Jones. Awesome. Right. Possibly a little bit of recency bias, but I do think Julio, great receiver, probably gonna end up with a gold jacket. Oh, yeah. Larry Fitz, uh, you know, again, I mean, consistency. I mean, through a long career, catching balls, catches everything thrown at him. That's an arguable statement. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jerry Rice, I don't think there's any argument. I think most people consider the greatest receiver of all time, uh, Jerry Rice. Uh, again, the, the totals, the, 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 the totals in uh, the records in his, um, in his uh, book, Unarguable. Oh yeah. Right. But already got the gold jacket. All right. Yeah. Um, well, and then it? he said the who, last one. He who's said number five. Himself. Well, if you <laughs> if you know anything about anything about football, he's not even the third best player on his team. Third best <laughs> wide receiver on his team. Uh, he's. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously. I mean, just Devonte Adams himself is two of. Marquez Valdez Scantley, uh, uh, very preposterous statement. Uh, that's what I chose to be the more preposterous of the two statements. You chose the other one, which I think is also just as preposterous. Oh, it's just it crazy. is yeah. just craziness. It was uh, it was back during uh, the the politics talk, yeah. and um, and uh, they were t- they were it's just about math. Yeah. And you know sometimes math is tough. Math can be tough. And uh, but but the thing is, it's it's a whole organization that made the statement. Yeah, an it's, entire it's, network. It's not just uh, just uh, uh, the fact that, that that one person's bad at math. It's a whole organi- organization that struggled with math on this one. <laughs> it was uh, MSNBC. Uh, they uh, read a tweet that said Bloomberg spent 500 million on ads. The U.S. population is t- 327 million. He could g- have given each American 1 million and had lunch money left over. Yeah. It's not how it works. It's not how math works. There. 
Yeah, I'll, uh, maybe we'll bring one of the tabulators in a little later. Explain if you're, if you're thinking, well, I think that's pretty good math. Then uh, you need to talk to the tabulators. That's not how math works. Yeah, um, I actually at first when at first when we first when you first said the statement, I was like, I was like, how's that wrong? I was like, what's what's wrong with that? And then and then I thought about it and I was like, wait, that's more like one dollar to everybody, <laughs> not one million dollars to everybody. Right. Totally right. made then clicked and I was like, oh, okay, now that is very preposterous, <laughs> but uh, uh, super funny. Yes. Um, I, I uh, we got Tony. Uh, uh, clicking in, getting us ready to show off what's happening in the ice fishing derby world. Yes. Uh, we got people fishing all over the lake right now, but uh, we are under 10 minutes now left in this uh, game. I know it's been a great one. Bones got out there in front and has just stayed out there in front. Um, in second place, uh, another great player is Meg. I'm trying to say it right. I don't know. How, it's a lot of G's. Yeah, really top tier player right there. Yeah. Um. Uh. I think I I talk about uh, Maggie. Uh, <laughs> you gotta roll the G. Uh. <laughs> uh. In uh, our uh, little uh, commercial show ah. um, at some point, but uh, big time player right there. And uh, yeah, there's Mike. Uh, jackpot winner Mike. Uh, T Zig. Mom and daughter, the duo at JC's Bar and Grill. We love our duos here. Absolutely. A lot of great duos out there. So uh, I think, yeah, uh, we are ready to uh, check out what's happening out there in Big Wampum Lake. Well, here it is. Right. Wait one second. Yeah, you got to do that. There you Boom. go. Boom. Hey. There we are. Oh, it's kind of cold out here. Yeah, long. a little. Very, let's see what the buddy. You said that you are. What's your prediction of who's the buddy going to be the most used buddy? Stu. Stu, my prediction. I'm saying two weeks in a row, Susie is the number one buddy. Oh, oh son. But Susie coming in strong, tying up Stu. Stu coming off a victory again last night on uh, Megasota game night. Oh, yeah. But. Again, Suds, very strong on Wednesdays. Susie, extremely strong on Wednesdays, all right? Uh, poor Steve just never really comes in that strong. Uh, <laughs> I like Steve. I think he knows. Poor, poor Steve. Yeah, I think he actually knows where the fish are, but no one believes in Stu. I mean, no one believes in, in Steve. And w in our, our on Wednesdays, uh, people aren't uh, really appreciating Stu at the level that they uh, Oh, that yeah, they, they, they really are enjoying Suds this time. Yeah. I love Suds. Suds, one of my favorite uh characters in all of our games that we can pick yeah um, i definitely a huge fan of suds yeah so um then you can check out uh let's check out uh the lures the lures that they're yeah using let's there. see those lures well there it is uh that top left one that i was talking about is number one like it is that green uh beautiful lure right there Always your um, mealworms coming in at six percent yeah i it's a little higher than they normally come in at. yes i uh, i think you did a little bit of salesmanship for that but uh but you know i said maybe one of the middle ones coming in at 13 percent. i think that's sardines right there yeah it looks like it that's yeah. a good choice there's there's a there's a nice aroma with the sardines that might attract some fish. Yes, I I think that was a that's a great pick. Um, obviously, these players know better than we do about yes, uh, do. about these low lures and where the hot spots are. I'm I'm checking out this map right here. There are so many players up in that top this area right here i i think the fish are really swimming yeah i think so as well hey just a uh, one thing to re make sure i remind you guys that this is the last uh ice fishing derby that we're gonna do for this season <gasps> that's right that's right we're jumping into uh we got to get out uh, the the regular boats get ready to do some just regular fishing out there maybe we'll do some uh um uh, you know, skin. We need to do some water skin behind the, the boat. All that. We're going to dethaw the lake, and we're going to come out with some regular fishing derby starting next week. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get back to regular old fishing derby. 
It's one of my favorite uh, ways. I always like that we change it up uh, each season with the yes. season. But uh, uh, I uh, I think it's just going to bring summer quicker. And anything that can bring summer quicker, I am a fan for. Absolutely. That is always a good idea. So uh, we are rolling with just under four minutes left in this ice fishing derby tournament the last of this season we'll see ice fishing derby in season 10 now it will be back as soon as the weather starts to break uh the other way again but uh but yeah, yeah. don't talk about that time that's no. that's far far away far <laughs> far far away in the land uh, yeah, I don't know what I was gonna say. But yeah, um, well, that's a that's Star Wars reference, and it's a perfect transition into our celebrity birthdays. Oh, because we have a Star Wars celebrity Ooh. in our celebrity birthdays. Uh, um, today it's uh, um, uh, John Boyega. That's what I said. Uh, yeah. uh, he is uh, he's an actor uh, from uh, he is in Star Wars: The Force Awakens and all the new Star Wars uh, uh, Skywalker trilogy. Um, uh, they uh, um, he plays Finn. Finn. Yep. yep. No, it does a really good job. I, I've enjoyed. Uh, his acting in those movies, I think he's done a, a nice oh, yeah. job with that. Born in 1992. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we got a bunch of cool birthdays, a lot of sports uh, celebrity birthdays. We had Bobby Jones, legendary golfer. Sammy ba ba uh, Bao, uh, yeah, um, NFL Hall of Fame QB. Yeah. But not only did did he just play quarterback, he was also a punter and a defensive back. Yeah. No. Yeah, a multiple position athlete um, back in those uh, early 1900s uh, playing football. And was a player um, coach for part of that. Yeah, was a player coach. Was just a really, a really talented uh, uh, in just the game of football. Yeah. Um, well, another really talented athlete was um, uh, Danny Ainge. Yeah, wow. Um, just super talented. He was uh, obviously known for those uh, legendary Celtics teams mm -hmm. um, where he was winning all those championships and stuff like that. But little did you know that uh, NBA was not his first love. It was first. He was the first in MLB player. Wow. Just a crazy enough athlete to be an MLB. Decided that, huh, after three years of being an MLB, MLB quite isn't for me. And decided to become an NBA player. One of the legendary Celtics players. And then coached right after that. And then became one of the best as executives in all the NBA from 2000 all the way to the present now. Um, Danny Ainge, just a legend when it comes to sports. Absolutely. If you're talking about like a career of sports one of the most accomplished dudes for sure well let's check back here in the game as we're now under one minute bones still in first place but out of points i mean out of place we got in sixth place we got mikey in seventh yo mama in eighth place t zig in ninth is mom data in second place is meg in third place is hannah in fourth place is mayren and in fifth place is flash Daddy, uh, did anybody have any points left? I don't. Think yeah, it looks like so. All the it? plays were done. So if you're outside that top ten, make sure you get your plays in. Scoot inside that top ten because uh, we definitely want to see you win some cash. Each one of those placements get you a little bit more money. So uh, uh, get all those points in. You don't want to leave anything up on the board. And there it is. Ten seconds left. Until what I assume would be Bones getting the win. Yeah, that's a huge win for Bones, uh, as Bones is one of our top 10 PGL players. Um, that is 68,130 points. That would be a very large points grab uh, in this one game. We'll see how that affects the standings, uh, but this is going to be a, a huge one for Bones. Oh, yeah, let's see. There it is, Bones at Duffy's Bar and Grill in Owasso. Uh, good job, Bones. Duffy's Bar, big time location. Yep. Uh, Bones, big time player. Uh, just a really good win right there. Yeah, congratulations. And we'll get the full top 
uh, leaderboard in that game of ice fishing derby as we roll on. Let me see. Uh, now we are going into some wipeout blackout, I think. Okay, yeah, we're jumping into our wipeout blackout, wipeout blackout. Give me six. We're going to do that three times. Those two games of Wipeout Blackout and one game and give me six. Oh, yeah. We'll go on a quick break, and then we'll be right back with you guys for some more Wipeout Blackout. See you in a second. Winning preposterous game. It was preposterous. I don't think it was on the level of the hundreds. When Lord of the Rings, the third Lord of the Rings movie came out, it crushed everything. One best picture. One best picture, and I think it won 10 awards because the first two never really did much. But everybody loved them, and they were huge successes. And then the third one came, and the Academy's like, well, I guess we got to make up for the first two. Right, if you look dead. at it as one nine-hour movie, yeah. we got to give it something. something. It's yeah. kind of epic. My, my, we were uh, we were reminiscing on the Power Trip After Party podcast. I don't know if you've heard about that. But, I don't uh, think you, you can, can download it, it enough on the no, radio. You can listen to it right now. You can right now. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the Power Trip is not done super well uh, overall, but we like uh, uh, some of them just personally. Obviously, I once said... That uh, 311 is light years better than the Beatles. <laughs> right. I will stand by that. I always love that. Uh, Chris Hockey, just as of this morning, said he will still stand by that Justin Bieber is a modern day Mozart. <laughs> um, Those are good. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, Rosen, of course, is a, is a part of both shows. He's a, he's a guarantee to make the tournament every year. And this is a minor spoiler without saying which one, but um, I am thrilled that Sauce's statement this year made the tournament because I, uh, I don't remember him saying it specifically. I don't even know what show he said it on. But uh, that is my sneaky favorite to win the whole thing, and I can't wait uh, to talk about it tomorrow morning after the bracket is out, and we can talk about it with Sauce tomorrow. My, uh, my, there, there are many that I would, you know, again, I got my, a favorite of this year that was uttered this year that I think might be my favorite of all time. Mm. But I also like, and I think it was the, it's the only f uh, female to win the event, Amy Van Dyken. Yes, mm -hmm. she was the one who beat the Gorg one. Yeah, she beat yeah. the Gorg one, and so I can, you know. But the Van Dyken one is so. Do you do you have that somewhere? It's rather lengthy. But if you it could, is lengthy. if you could find it, it's just so good. When she's talking about Drew Brees and free agency and franchise tags, and basically want wants to lead us to believe that Drew Brees is basically living check to check, and that this is <laughs> going to be an important uh, franchise tag. Here it is, and I do have my favorite one from the Power Trip. Okay. We can play next to Drew Brees. I think that for him holding out, I thought it was awesome because I've said it uh, time and time again. This is the second time in his career that he was franchised. The, the, everyone needs to sit down, and the CBA should have addressed this, that you shouldn't be allowed to be franchised more than one time in your career. Yeah, because that is got to be. It's, it's crap. And look at what happened to him last time. He ended up hurting his shoulder. Everyone thought that he was done. He was lucky to get signed with the Saints. Then what he did was absolutely amazing. I mean, that's tough. And he's got a kid and he's got a family and he's got to provide for these people. And he doesn't know if, where his next meal is coming from. I mean, that's <laughs> tough. And it's tough to not know. And especially this year, it's tough to not know if he's going to play or not before he signed. Because if he doesn't sign, he gets no insurance. So his wife is going to have to have that baby and they're going to have to front the money for that. And that's a lot of money to have a baby, you know, and then front heaven the forbid money. and let's knock on what it doesn't happen. Complications make it even more complicated and more expensive. And I don't know. I think what he did was really, really gutsy. And you know, obviously what they could have done, taking the lead from you and they could have started a Kickstarter campaign for that insurance money. Yeah, that for, sure. yeah, for sure. You need to monetize a preposterous statement yeah. term is what you need to do. That's but what... you know, the key though, what she just did, and we've talked about this every year, we've always done this selection show too, is that the ones that are said semi sarcastically or tongue in cheek right. should never win. Right. Like right. the ones that are the best are the ones where you say it and you mean it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Earnest. You, you, right. You have to truly mm. believe it. Then it makes it extra preposterous. And you could tell she, she wasn't really no. kidding. I mean, again, in the back of her mind, did she think he was broke? No, but she said it like he is concerned about his family's welfare. Yeah. Like, feeding the family, feeding the family. Well and, and, you know, um, what was really nice was it, it, I think when she was first nominated and she was advancing in it, she was on Twitter and she was, um, um, I think she was annoyed by she got it defensive, right? Defensive. Yes. But yeah, then she, the, she but played they, along, but then she played along and got into it. She actually came on the air and did the interview with us, the victory speech afterwards. That's awesome. Quick, you, quickly before we go yeah. to break, my favorite ever uttered on the power trip morning show and Connecticut and Oklahoma moving on to the women's final four Connecticut, uh, only one by 40. Do you think they could beat any Division Three basketball? I think they could beat a Division Three men's team. I think you're nuts. No, not a Division One, Division Three. I think they could. We could have a discussion. I maybe I'll name some names when we come maybe. back. Maybe your group you could put together on a weekend. I played D three ball. No, man, they're good.
See, Charge, you and I are similar in so many ways. We're both um, living, breathing. Like, I don't know if skeptics is the right word for you. It's skeptic is the right word for me. But we both question everything we yeah. read, hear, see, like 24 sure. hours a day. So I like that the two sound bites we played, you with Gorg and me with Rosie, it's instantly questioning somebody's <laughs> yeah. opinion. Just oh one goodness. Uh, everything oh but the minor. Goodness. They just won everything but the minor. They just won the major. They just uh they just won the mega. That's over a hundred and eighty thousand dollars. I can't even believe it. Woo! <laughs> oh my goodness! AK Lucky. Well, I guess so. I guess so. the 102nd birthday of the American League. Hey guys, hey. what a wonderful game of uh, of uh, Wipeout Blackout. I saw hot, uh, what was it, hot chicken. Got the cover all, that's right. I saw Trevor getting a win, I think on the line. And uh, we'll get all those details here in just a second for you. Let me go over those top 10 in ice fishing derby that we just wrapped up right before that last game of Wipeout Blackout. We had Slim008 uh, over at Johnny C's in ninth. Mama Dada and uh, JC's Bar and Grill in ninth. T Zig at Poots Tavern in eighth. Yo Mama at Douglas Saloon in seventh. Mike in at Pappy's uh, Cafe in sixth. Flash Daddy at the Pit Stop Bar in fifth. May Ren at Red Vest in fourth. In third, Hannah at Manitourville Saloon in second place. Meg at Hard Water Lounge and in first place, Bones at Duffy's Bar and Grill. Oh yeah, a lot of big time winners. And do you want to tell you who else is a big time winner? Who's that? Our our oh, Minnesota Vikings. Breaking news. Our Minnesota Vikings uh, just coming in about uh, 30 minutes ago. Uh, uh, eight time Pro Bowler, three time first team All Pro, the two in the 2010s All Decade team with 28 career interceptions, 91 pass breakups. Patrick Peterson signs a one-year, $10 million deal to the Minnesota Vikings. Ooh, purple and gold. Let's go. Skull. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I think he is, the, he is just what we were talking about on the show. Uh, we were saying we need to sign a veteran cornerback and none better than Patrick Peterson uh, to sign right there to go out uh, to go opposite from our young DBs that need a little bit of mentoring. Yep. I think uh, he is that perfect guy for that. Um, a high, a good locker room guy. Never heard anything bad about Patrick Peterson. Only good things in the locker room. Yep. And uh, can't wait to see him on the field in that purple 
and gold. Man, is he going to look good in that He's going to look good gold. in purple. I mean, it's hard not to look good in purple, but uh, I think he's going to especially look great in purple. And he is that vet in the in the CB room that uh, that can go in there and help our young DBs. 100% agree with you on that. Man. Um, our, that's going to really be a per perfect we, situation. Defense going – my hopes for the defense going from – from eh, like the defense, we're gonna have to do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, what do we got? Oh, I forget. We jump into this really quick. So I was thinking maybe it was that uh, it is the Musco Tango and Victory splitting that Musco on the line prize. Now we're looking at 44 balls on this large frame to see if we can get this $1,600. Oh, yeah, super cool. You can keep up. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what was going on. Well, let me tell go over the top five bars so far tonight. In first place, we got the Backyard Bar and Grill in Pemberton uh, getting 61,445 points. In second place, Cabin Bar with 58,120 points. In third, we got a no... Onomia, Onomia Vets Club with 57,850 points. And fourth place, we got Boulevard Bar and Grill with 57,455 points. And in fifth place, JC's Bar and Grill with 47,930 points. Dang, some top locations killing it. Uh, well, we're moving on to that Musco prize of $46 on this large frame. We got two balls away, Mark. That means that, that those keep on growing and roll over to the next round. So the next game we're going to play is going to be that uh, give me six. But then we're going to come right back to wipe out blackout. Oh, yeah. There it is. Large frame going out to Peyton at American Legion Rice. And let's see. That's Peyton Manning out there playing. Could be Peyton Manning. Most we likely. have a lot of uh, athletes, uh, celebrities um, uh, that like to play. Well, there's Juicy J and DJ Dooman. And Heidi letters. Jim, okay, Juicy J, DJ Dooman, Malone's, Heidi Jim, all splitting that must-go prize of $57. And now we should be getting enrolled in our first game of Gimme 6. Gimme 6 the game where I have never seen a Gimme 6 game not give out a jackpot. That's right. Uh, we're 6 for 6, and uh, we're about to get enrolled here. If you want to win a jackpot, this is prime opportunity right here. Jackpots go out like crazy. So uh, just looking at that first game of Wipeout uh, Blackout, just to make sure I uh, give everyone their due on that Musco line prize. It was Trevor at American Legion St. Michael. In the Musco large frame, it was T Hopper over at Norm's Wayside. And in uh, Musco coverall, we had Hot Chicken at Municipal Liquor Store. Uh, that was the first game of Wipeout Blackout. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, now we're getting into Give Me Six. I'm super excited. I don't even know how to explain it, um, how excited I am about uh, Patrick Peterson coming in. Oh, yeah. I can't I stop think that's thinking okay. about it. It just keeps on going through my head. We got those two really good D tackles. If we can remain uh, good with Daniel Hunter, uh, him being really good, I think uh, on the other other side, DJ Wanham will be a really nice uh, number two edge rusher. Um, I think our linebacker crew is going to be one of the best linebacker crews in the NFL. Um, addition with Patrick Peterson, you still got um, – uh, um, Who's our safety? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you still got Harris. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Harris at safety. And then um, just a, a lot of really good talent um, around that and, and a little bit of depth in every position that because of those guys had to start because of a lot of injuries last year. We have a lot of guys that have starter experience mm -hmm. in the defensive side of the ball. I think uh, that's always good for a team. And uh, so I expect this uh, Vikings defense to make a full 180 and uh, be a completely different and uh, uh, a stereotypical Mike Zimmer defense. Absolutely. It's got all the makings of it. You know, last year we had to do basically everything on – uh, the heels of the explosive offense, um, but we were averaging the exact same number of yards uh, as a as a great offense, and our defense was the exact exact same number of yards of giving up. And so, uh, but I think it was just a lot of young guys. There was a lot of talent on the field. We just had to get that all worked out. Injuries, yeah. 
and injuries as well. And so I think that we've gone a long ways in this offseason now to really solidifying that defense, getting to back where we're used to um, uh, for a Coach Zim defense. And so we're going to see how that all oh, yeah. plays out. If we can draft a line, yeah. if we can draft a line, this is going to be like draft a, a, a draft good on a lineman. Yeah, one, an offensive line. One you're, you're one hit about, on an offensive lineman. Yeah. yeah, one hit on an offensive lineman in the in the draft. Uh, I this is the the great off season that uh, that the Vikings needed to go from uh, playoff team, which I think they were last year. Yep. Even if they're fully healthy, they were playoff team level mm-hmm. to. Uh, contender level yeah i think of the hercules uh cartoon uh, uh song from zero to hero um just like that and egg, i think that that could happen egg, yeah. exactly oh this is uh such a fun game with all the different uh colors the uh pulsing different numbers yes uh coming up definitely one of the coolest uh game views uh now you are picking those lucky six yeah, and then we got a $310 small frame jackpot. We got a $950 coverall, and we'll see uh, who can take uh, these prizes home right now yeah. on this game. Well, that was the first black blockbuster sign for the for the Vikings, and I was super happy with it. Yeah, well, that's uh, a great one. Uh, definitely a really great one. One that I thought was needed, but I thought maybe might never happen. Yeah, no, uh, we, we talked about, we even did a whole uh, segment of the show talking about DBs that we could add, veteran DBs, you know, who would be a nice fit. And uh, I think uh, that is the answer to yeah, the question. We said Patrick Peterson, I just didn't ever expect him to leave uh, Car- uh, uh, Cardinals. No. So um, there it is. Cardinals have been signing a ton of players. I like what the Cardinals are doing this offseason, too, in free agency. Oh, yeah. What we'll they signed today, goes. A.J. Green today. Yeah. Um, having, they're going to have two of the longest uh, catch radius guys oh, um, in the yeah. NFL uh, yeah. on, Hopkins, on and, uh, Hopkins and A.J. Green. Just two guys that have the two garage type, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, uh, two garage door type uh, catch radius. There's Kevin getting that must go over at Doc's landing of $53. And we still got a shot at this $950 jackpot coverall. Yeah, I do. I think there's only been actually like one, a very few amount of players that can actually cover that two garage door radius. Yeah. And like it's Calvin Johnson and maybe Randy Moss. Right, right. Yeah, no, uh, those guys were crazy. I mean. Uh, just the ability to extend their bodies and catch it at the fingertips. Just insane those two receivers they're long and explosive and we are in the must go on this cover all and it goes out to m and t over at who goes bowling in uh centra in buffalo that's the first time i've ever seen a not a jackpot go out and uh, give me six you know what that makes me think is i think later in the broadcast now we're gonna get a two jackpot uh game of give me six it, we'll see it seems like that's how it has to go right here well we were going over uh before we took a break about celebrity birthdays yes we talked about our uh crazy good amount of uh uh athlete talent oh, yeah. within our celebrity birthdays between bobby jones sammy vogue uh uh danny ainge yep and uh, also, uh, uh, we didn't go over this one, but uh, Katie Ledecky, um, one of the greatest uh, American, uh, female American swimmers uh, uh, of my time, uh, five, uh, five-time Olympic gold medalist uh, in the 2012 Olympics and the 2016 Olympics. We were just talking about how crazy five gold Olympic medals are, and like not a lot of people can do that. It's a very selective group that can win multiple gold medals, yeah. but uh, I've just see uh, uh, from Michael Phelps has completely spoiled me with with the, with uh, thinking that oh just anyone can win just like a grand amount of gold medals because oh, how I many know. does he have? Uh, I'd have to maybe uh, producer John can uh, look that up or Nikki, um, but uh, yeah, get that total here. But uh, yeah, I know I came up just a little short on getting my five gold medals. Um, I just came up five short of that. Twenty three. <laughs> 23. I also came up a little bit short on 23 gold medals. Uh, I was only 23 short of that. He has 28 total medals. 23 gold. So, you know, when you're What was happening on those other five? Was he just uh, slacking off? It was during his down years. 
Yeah, you know, there was some, some yeah, you, you go through things. He's a go down, through things he, a he had a down Olympics and yeah. and just just was getting third in the third in the in the worldwide competition of swimming and you know, that was really rough for him. Yeah. And uh, it's challenging. It's <laughs> challenging when you're only third best in the world at something. Um, especially when you've Tw 23 times you've been the greatest in the world. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Like five gold, uh, gold medals, absolutely insane. But when you're comp when you think about Michael Phelps, just because you, you think about him whenever you talk about Olympic swimmers, uh, you go, wow, he won a lot. Yeah, yeah, for. But sure. crazy good athletes. Well, there it is. Tammy at Tootsie's in Big Lake winning that twenty-one dollar uh, Musco line prize. <laughs> Showed us pictures of him with all of his medals. Crazy, insane. I don't know if I could stand up. I think I'm falling down from the weight of all the medals around my neck. Just boom. Like as soon as he puts it on around my neck, it's it's that, that, that second I hit the floor. Well, I think that would have been during cutting season when you were doing that. I think right now that you're in bulking season, I think you could withstand it. I, I might be able to handle it. Yeah. 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 You got more faith than I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we had also a wonderful singer in our national birthdays as well. Yes. Um, in 1919, uh, Nat King Cole, um, one of my the favorites. singer, uh, just one of those iconic voices uh, that you always hear, especially during uh, that Christmas time. For sure, yeah. It, it, it's not a Christmas time if I don't listen to one of those Christmas classics sung by Nat King Cole. Eat some cookies. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> yeah, for sure. Well, we're moving on to this Musco on this large frame this round and uh, see if we can give out this coverall jackpot in uh, right here. It paused for a second. I thought it did. I oh, thought maybe. maybe the double win it was, was going to happen. Yeah. Oh, it would have been absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah. When the broadcaster freezes like that, sometimes that's when the crazy stuff goes down. That, that, uh, it, it's what happens more more often than not. Well, there's the oh. double win going out anyways to Juicy J and then RJ5616 splitting that uh, that uh, large frame. Also with Sack. Uh, 99. Oh, yeah, Sack yeah. 99. Good job. All three of you guys splitting that large frame. And then Juicy J said, I don't want to split the split the coverall just like the large frame and said, I'm going to win it all to myself, that $43 large frame. And that means we're going to get enrolled in one more game of Wipeout Blackout before oh, yeah. we hit another game of Gimme Six. So uh, as we're getting enrolled in that, uh, let's see. We also had another uh, singer uh, on our list as well. Yeah, we had um, a singer, uh, Billy Corrigan. Uh, he's a rock singer and songwriter for Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, huge 90s iconic uh, band. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, there you go. A couple of great singers, um, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, maybe if... Uh, if uh, Billy Corrigan put on a little bit of weight, he could uh, he could play the twins in uh, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does have that clean shaved. Uh, or uh, head, or so. get real. Or he has the other option of getting really buff yeah. and becoming Mister Clean. Oh so yeah. So there's there's two ways he can go about this bald head thing. Yeah, no, it's it's quality. Uh, maybe he could do a rendition of Kojak. Bring that back. Uh, oh. Billy uh, Corgan owns a minor league wrestling uh, league. That's interesting. Yeah, that's cool stuff. I would love it for uh, Billy Corgan to introduce you in a in a wrestling league. Imagine him oh, just yeah. like just like belting out something. You just coming out and uh, it would be hype. It would yeah. be hype. No, I, I I see the I see the dry ice going. I see uh, I see all kinds of great stuff. The crowd just going crazy, and uh, yeah, that is quality quality uh show so uh there we go oh yeah uh we got producer john coming up with a picture of uh just a tremendous wrestling belt um and uh and there's billy holding them so oh yeah, yeah. He's, it, so it's an intense uh wrestling league i guess but uh uh we, we talked about the amazing singers we talked about the amazing athletes yes but there are so many actors and actresses within our uh Within our celebrity birthdays as well. Yeah, one of my favorite, Tony Dow, uh, played Wally in the TV series Leave It to Beaver. Oh yeah. Then we also had in 1949, Patrick Duffy, actor, uh, played Bobby Ewing in the TV series Dallas. Yeah, and then uh, 
can't uh, have a list of actors without including Rob Lowe. Uh, super, uh, he's done, he, again, we talked about uh, Kurt Russell's in the list as well. Okay. I kind of accidentally just skipped him over, skipped yes, over him. But yes. Kurt Russell uh, and and both, and Rob Lowe. Interesting that they're both born on the same birthday because they're both one two of those actors that can play some serious roles, like Kurt Russell did as the coach on Miracle on Ice, uh -huh. and like Rob Lowe has done in several movies, or on like West Wing, he played a serious role. But then also are really good at playing in comedies. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, you know Rob Lowe, Parks and Rec. Uh, yeah, that's you know. probably my favorite work of Rob Lowe is his his Parks and Rec work. Oh, he does. A great I think job it's in that. hilarious. He does a hilarious job in that. Sea Bear twenty five over at Eagles uh, Mankato getting that must go on the line prize twenty three dollars and we're working on this large frame so yeah both those actors born on the same day and they both play series and comic roles i've heard several actors say that comedy is the hardest i i've heard that as well just because uh you have to you it, there's something more to it than just speaking the line with emotion yeah. or with whatever you're told to do you have to have this a uh, certain way of uh of this certain charisma yeah um uh being in comedy you know what's funny is is both of those guys are uh good looking guys you know and to be able to pull off i think it's harder to pull off comedy if you're a really good looking guy like that like yes i, think, I completely agree it's i think a, there's there's yeah there's something to it that makes you less funny uh and, and as it is like vice versa where it's tough like if you see a guy who's a heavier set male and uh or or uh not as good looking male and he's a uh, playing in a a uh in a action or uh drama uh you go you go wow he's a very talented actor because he overcame uh the, what what they would usually hire as their uh, actors in those situations. Yep, yep. Well, there's Boon Me 3, uh, one of our big time players out there getting that $38 must go on the coverall at uh, Sherburn Municipal Liquor Store. Uh, and then here goes the must go, uh, I, that was the large frame I should have said, but Boon Me 3, I brought it to fruition by saying it, also did get the must go coverall um, over at Sherburn Municipal Liquor oh, yeah. Store as well. Well, talking about, uh, just, just uh, talking about uh, fun Funny comedic actors. Yes. Uh, um, I'm super excited because I've heard this whole entire th uh, theory about what's going to be happening with the new Spider-Man movie that's coming out. Oh, I haven't heard anything about this. Well, here's here's the theory that's that's out there right Is there, now. Should we warn people that uh, that you could uh, um, what do you call it? A spoiler alert. I don't know if this would be a spoiler because I, I just don't know what could because it's already like known things that's going to be out that like if you just looked up this actor's name you would you would know this about him okay and it's just putting things together okay. that uh, I just didn't want to ruin anything for anybody in Minnesota that are that are okay here's here's yeah. the theory is uh, you know um, the uh, heavier set best friend to Spider Man in the in the new Spider Tom Holland Spider Man movies. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, the nerdy. He he has the like the crystal in his pocket when he goes up the elevator yep, and, yep. and uh, the um I forgot what tower it was. Uh, but uh, um, I know what you're talking about though. But yeah. uh, he has lost a bunch of weight recently. Oh really? And and people are thinking that he might be the next villain oh. in the move in the next movie. Interesting. So that's 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 as much as I'm I'm willing to give up of the theory because I don't want to say any spoilers okay. or anything. Okay. But that's the theory is that he lost a bunch of weight to play the villain ah. in the next uh, Spider-Man movie. To be I honest, think, I would have preferred the chubby villain. Um, just like just kind of like how Thor played uh played chubby Thor in yeah. the last uh, Thor. I, yeah. I completely I like chubby, agree. Chubby villain. Um, we got a minute and a half left to get enrolled in this next game of Gimme Six. Uh, yeah, we've been rolling through a bunch of great celebrity birthdays. Uh, did we miss anybody on our celebrity birthday? I think we got everybody. I think we talked about everybody. A bunch, a, of them. a bunch of uh, celebrity birthdays. Well, uh, here is a um, super uh, another celebrity um, little day in history. Yeah. Um, um, with uh, can can you say this movie's name? Yeah, Aaron Brockovich. Yeah, Aaron Brockovich released in uh, March 17, uh, 2000. Julia Roberts became the first female performer ever to command 
20 million per movie. Universal Pictures was initially reluctant to hand over Roberts her uh, record-breaking paycheck. However, her agent uh, uh, reportedly convinced the studio that she deserved it. I completely agree that she deserves it nowadays, and I think anybody nowadays would say Julia Roberts deserved that paycheck. She had had multiple hits, you know, like uh, Pretty Woman and uh, a bunch of other hits, I think like The Runaway Bride, before that ever happened. So I'm even surprised they ever even questioned it but uh yeah just it, that's an iconic movie uh great job by her and she's as we talked about uh earlier during the happy hours broadcast she's one of those uh actresses that you just expect good things when you see she's on the project like so. that tom like tom hanks yeah yeah uh, sure. just you're just like wow probably a good movie no matter what she's in what what it is if it's outside your taste it's probably a good movie. Yeah, still going to be a good one. And and actually, in 2000, you were very young in 2000. But, uh, but yeah, in 2000, $20 million was actually a lot of money. No, I was uh, two years old on yeah. that day. Yeah, would you have been two yet? Because you were born in 98, but it was in De- it was in November, in tw- November, you know, late November. Yeah. So... Oh, wait. Yeah, no, I would just be one. I would have been one years old. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. uh, You know, producer John's just shaking his head. He can't believe that $20 was a lot of money at one point. Um, But Yeah, I don't even know if John was born when that happened. Nope, nope. Still was a... Not quite born. (laughs) So... uh, Youngins. Yeah. You work with youngins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh... That's uh, that's what we get. We get uh, a lot of young folks that are technologically savvy around here at Pilot. So, or you just get your son a job. Uh, <laughs> I had to be potted with someone. So, uh, yeah, no, it but, actually yeah. worked out really nice. No, it's and been we, great. We've had enjoyed. super fun doing it. Yeah. It worked out well because we coached together as well, and so it made yep. our schedules line up, and so we could coach easily together. But there's Letty Lou at the Bar Hastings winning that uh, small frame, jackpot. winning the jackpot. Let's see if we can get two jackpots out this round. Uh, You made the prediction that two jackpots were going to go out this round. So I'm not going to get too excited yet because I want to see if both jackpots are going to go out. And then I'm going wild if they both do. I think we're at three for the day. We need three more uh, to make sure we get this done. I mean, Nikki and Tony did a mic drop. They were like, we are the golden uh, headset. They're not going to let us live it down if we don't get three more tonight. Exactly, and uh, we would never want to just be shown up by Nikki and Tony. No, no. I mean, they are the gold standard, but we want to prove that we are the young up-and-comers. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we have some fun uh, Minnesota trivia story news of the weird. Yeah, so this is a pretty cool one. Uh, It is uh, the world's largest snowman statue. There is Jay Zam, superhero, bingo superhero, over at Howie's Sports Bar and Grill in St. Cloud, winning $1,000. Way to go, Jay Zam. Out there at Howie's Sports Bar and Grill getting that. We did get the double jackpot. Just you like predicted we, it. Yeah. Hey, two games, two jackpots. We knew it had to happen because it was just we always get a jackpot every gimme six. So if there's gonna be two games, we don't get one in the first game, two in the second game. And that's how we roll. Well, we are at four. Four. We need two more guys. The night cannot stop until we get two more jackpots, or it will stop and we'll have come up short. But um I think we can get this done. I think I. I mean, I'm fully convinced now. Yeah. I was a little worried earlier. We, I was like, "There's less than 30 minutes left in the broadcast. Yeah. We still have. We still have four jackpots to go. Yeah. And then they just say, "Okay, let's get out two right here." And now we. You only have two jackpots. Yeah. I'm like two jackpots in 30 minutes. That could happen. I was worried Tony was going to start taunting us in the Slack channel. And I uh, mean, he does tend to do that. <laughs> No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> now he's going to go, oh, big man going to get six jackpots. No, he didn't do that at all, and we're at four now, so we'll see how it goes. Um, well, well, back on track. Back on track. World's largest snowman statue. Yes. Uh, uh, it's in uh, North St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah. Love North St. Paul. We got some great locations playing uh, pilot games. Uh, that that uh, snowman's 44 feet tall. Pretty tall. Pretty That's tall. decently tall. And then a 16-foot smile on that snowman weighing 20 tons. 20 tons. I don't know how many, like, of something 
like to, to explain what 20 tons are like how much is, uh, what is a what's something that weighs a ton We're looking this up. All right, this is quality broadcasting right now. Um, let me get back on track. Why they're looking yeah, up? Yeah, it's well, it's two thousand pounds. Okay, is is a ton. Okay. So a small car weighs about two t weighs about one ton. Okay, all right. So a small car about one ton, and it'd be twenty small cars. So yeah. So basically, if you put twenty s small cars together, that's how uh, how much uh, that snowman weighs, and uh, you know. If we got seven jackpots out, my smile might be 16 feet long yeah. as well. Because uh, I would love to uh, maybe show up uh, Nikki and Tony a little bit. But we got a we got a lot of we work. We would have to do a that. lot of work, a lot of work. Well, uh, we have some. There is a win over at uh, Crack in Crack winning that line prize at Tootsie's for twenty two dollars. I always get so excited whenever we switch over to this. I know, I know it pops in. Just wins so quickly. But uh, uh, I think we're coming in just a little late. Yeah, well, we, we got a nice little run-up. We'll see if we can get this done. This would be a great start if we could get this large frame jackpot out right here. Um, $1,864. Let's see if we can get that done if by 44 balls. We got quite a few people that are in line, are you know, way in track on track for that. Oh yeah, no, I think it could happen this time around. See um, three amigos out there. One of my favorite movies, just quality movie. Great movie out there. Well, um, we've been pinning up some locations against each other um, for some prime time bets. Yes. Uh, I mean. It's been That's intense. Been There's been a lot of really good locations uh, coming out on top. I think Cabin Bar one being one of the highlighted locations. Yes. Uh, dominating uh, uh, so far in tonight's uh, game, but still only uh, still about uh, 23 minutes left in this uh, in this uh, PGL uh, night. Here. There goes out the large frame out to Trevor over at American Legion St. Michael. Is it going to go the cover out? No, we missed that on this round. So that means it's going to continue to grow and roll over to next round. So we're going to see if we can get that out uh, in this next round of wipeout blackout. There it is to Heather 85 at American Legion Deerwood. Good to see the American Legions as our charity of the week getting some wins out there. They do great work out in our communities. Well, it's uh, St. Patrick's Day, as you know, because it's uh, Sham Rockin' Wednesday. Well, uh, St. Uh, Patrick's Day kicks off a worldwide celebration, also known as the Feast of St. Patrick. Many uh, will wear green and ire in honor of the Irish and uh, decorate with shamrocks. As you can tell, wrong side, rockin' the shamrock. Um, yeah, you did the same thing as me. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, decorating shamrocks. According to the lore, uh, the wearing of green tradition dates back to a story written about St. Patrick in 1726. So all the way back in 1726, uh, St. Patrick used a shamrock to illustrate the Holy Trinity and uh, uh, wore green clothes. Now we celebrate it by drinking a bunch of green beer uh maybe a little bit of uh of your favorite uh uh or corned uh, beef yeah, and, 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 and cabbage yeah. yeah which is another one of our national days uh national corned beef and cabbage day um and why wouldn't we celebrate saint patrick and all he did uh with some green beer and corned beef and cabbage i think it's totally appropriate so uh patrick uh of course uh, that corned beef and uh, cabbage is more of a traditional Irish, United States Irish dish yes. um, than it is as far as actually in Ireland. I think they uh, they ate corned beef uh, instead of corned beef. It's bacon in cabbage is Ooh. is what how they do it in actually Ireland. I think um, I can get behind the Ireland way. Yeah. Well, I'm whenever you say bacon. You've got me uh, right there with yeah, you. Yeah, big bacon fan and, and uh, uh, definitely uh, was raised a big bacon fan uh, being the son of you. You are definitely a bacon guy. That's why I wear Triple uh, X Athletic Fit um, because bacon will uh, give you a certain type of figure. <laughs> if you eat enough bacon, there's your uh, there's your uh, little bit of uh, health pack for the day. If you eat a little bit of uh, a lot of bacon, it will affect your figure. Um, well, uh, 
those uh, crazy matchups we've had in uh, the in uh, these. It's been Bedrock versus Titan Sports Saloon. Yes. Neeson's Gaylord versus Aardvark Bar. American Legion Moorhead versus VFW Austin. Sax versus Kim Saloon. And Mills Lounge versus Otter Tail um, Supper Club. Uh, just a bunch of really, t uh, really, really good locations yes. paired up against each other today. And we'll see where that all ends. It's our first night of prime time bets, and we're uh, really loving that competition. Super, super fun. We also had uh, what was the buzz uh, for months and months around the state of Minnesota uh, about uh, what was going to happen when, at that time, intern john oh, signed yeah. up for his pgl count ended up that it took him 26 seconds uh to get signed up but we did move him to producer john especially after he got the tv monitor back hooked up when it went off during uh the broadcast so uh that's now producer john uh, but if you watch the video we'll be referred to him as intern job there's a uh, towel at uh, carboni's pizza cr billiards in coon rapids winning that line prize of twenty dollars now we're winning on Moving on to this $1,944 large frame. Just want to make sure I clarified that because I was worried people would watch the face uh, Facebook video live video. Like, this is Intern John. Yeah, this well, is I, the producer John. Who's the producer John guy and who's the Intern John? Yeah, and yeah, it turns out same person. Um, you can yeah. see how it get, could get confusing with all the Johns that work here at Pilot. There is several Johns, you know, and so uh, you got to keep it all straight. Uh, but uh, we do our best um, to make it all happen. Well, uh, we got just a little bit of run-up at this 1944 uh, jackpot on this large frame. Now we're at just a few balls and see if we can get this done. Um, with bated breath, this would be big. Yeah, if it could go out right here, no. Rolling over till the next time we play Wipeout Blackout. Well, yeah, a bunch of people so close. Um, Heather, 85, only one ball away. Um, just needs that lucky ball to fall. Well, uh, we've had a wonderful um, uh, start of the season with Jack Hunter, Vikings Bingo, and PGL. Yeah. Um, all of them been super crazy standings changing all the time. There's Boon Me 3 and uh, Heather 85. Heather 85, just two balls away on that coverall oh. jackpot. And nicely done. Boon Me 3 getting the $33 must go large frame at Sherburn uh, Municipal Liquor Store. Heather 85 getting the must go coverall $41 at American Legion Deerwood. And that means we are getting into another game of Gimme 6, right? That's what we're rolling to next. Yeah, I think it's already back to yep. Gimme 6. This will be, I think, our final game of Gimme 6 yes. before we get enrolled in a fun game of... We got Top 10, I think, coming up. Yeah, it is. It's Top 10, then uh, Jackpot Jungle. Yeah, it would be super fun. Um, we will, when we get off of Top 10, we will have to move some uh, different cords around cables, jump around three times, spin talk to the wizard and then we'll come back in with some uh 52 ball uh jackpot jungle um to end the broadcast so aka the wizard's tony yeah yeah so <laughs> it just means that we're gonna sit here while tony comes in and fixes everything well but, uh let's go over those jackpot hunter player and location standings i'm gonna go over those location standings for jackpot hunter because it has been crazy, and uh, we got quite a few uh, locations right now in the 25,000-point club. Yeah, we do. Well, in ninth place, we got American Legion Fridley with 14,000 points. Sixth place, it's a three-way tie between Eagles of Wantana, the Sunset Grill in Spring Lake Park, and South uh, Street Saloon in Mankato. Then in fifth place, we have Riverboat Depot in Sartell, home of the Yags crew. Then in third place, we have a uh, tie between American Legion Monticello and Moe's in Mountain View. Both those uh, those players are uh, in that 25,000 point club. Then in first place, there's another tie. It's craziness. The Car Carboni's Pizza, CR Billiards, Coon Rapids is tied up with VFW Austin at 30,000 points. It is uh, super tight in that top four. Anybody could come out as that number one location. Uh, it's, it's really a... Um, and then in fifth place, Riverboat Depot, 
only 2,000 points away from being in the 25,000 point club. Yeah, right it's, there. It's, uh, that top five is super close. Absolutely. It's going to be a great race down the stretch. Let's take a look at those players because we got a lot of folks really close also in these player standings. In sixth place, we got a tie between Thirsty and Bad Flop Bob, both sitting at 7,000 points. Thirsty's playing at Shady's Railside and Rice, and Bad Flop Bob's playing at American Legion Fridley. In fifth place, we got Slappy with 9,000 points, plays at Carboni's Pizza, CR Billiards, in Coon Rapids. Slappy last year tied with Mrs. Yags to be co-champions um, in these very standings. In fourth place, Mrs. T with 10,000 points. Where does she play? Riverboat Depot Sartell. That's going to be a common theme here with the next two players. In second place, we got a tie between family members of Mrs. T. That's right. It's Mrs. Yags and Yags 370. Both have 13,000 points, and they're both, I'm glad they're playing at the same location with each other. I think oh, yeah. that's a good sign for their marriage. It's at Riverboat Depot in Sartell. <laughs> and then in first place we got ak lucky with 14,000 points just 1,000 point lead at the sunset grill in spring lake park well here we are in uh the the only other purple studio we got um outside of vikings bingo and it would be only right to go over the vikings bingo oh yeah standings while we're in this purple uh give me six studio yeah well in uh in 10th place we have american legion shakopee in eighth place we have vfw spring lake park in also in eighth place is mama t's castle tap in little canada in seventh place we have carboni's pizza cr billiards sixth place frank's bar in st paul park in fifth place, Monticello VFW. Fourth place, St. Paul Park Legion. In third place, Riverboat Depot Sartell. Then in second place is Sue's Penalty Box in Eveleth. And then in first place, Titan Sports Saloon in Oakdale. Yeah, those locations have been doing a oh, great yeah. job all season long. Uh, we have got those lucky six picked, and we are rolling to see if we can give out yet another jackpot here in this small frame or this coverall last game we gave out a jackpot in both and uh, we'll see how that plays out well let me look at these vikings bingo player stands in 10th place donkey ninth place Vinny. eighth place lucky tim seventh place mrs t sixth place brizo fifth place joni in fourth place mad dog third place jack pine second place alice and in first place Elsa over at Titan Sports Saloon with 75,000 points. Oh, yeah. Elsa just a dominant uh, play. Well, there's Lucky Duck and Real 3 winning that $39 Musco prize. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get out the other jackpot, this coverall jackpot. We still got a shot at it. So. Hot Chicken only three balls away. Yeah, Hot Chicken's been lucky earlier today getting a win as well. Oh, yeah. Well, um, it's uh, been a bunch of PGL points won in the last two days. Absolutely. Well, uh, because Tuesdays, Wednesdays are our big PGL nights, uh, these uh, rankings are going to be completely shifted when we come in tomorrow. There's Barbie39 uh, winning that must-go prize of $79 on that coverall. Um yeah, over at the Nimrod Bar and Grill, congratulations, Barbie39. And that means we're going to start getting enrolled in this game of top 10. Uh, super fun football-themed game that we uh, – that it's our – it's uh, one of our favorite football-themed games. Oh, yeah. This and uh, Vikings Victory and Vikings Bingo, those are our – We're our, a little biased, yeah, though. Yeah. We, we like football. We do. We have, a, we have a special love for football. For shizzle. Well, um, um, PGL points, these rankings are going to be completely changed up when mm -hmm. we come in tomorrow. So definitely come in when uh, me and John are going to be here for uh, – uh, nice lunchtime Vikings bingo, and we can keep you guys all updated on everything that's changed in the PGL standings. But this is what they are right now. In 10th place, we have Lucky playing at uh, the Crow Bar and Grill. Then in 9th place, Keeves at Clearwater Corners. In 8th place, Nixon at Roseville BFW. Then in 7th place, we got Ramrod at Spare Time Lanes. In sixth place, Sloppy at Malone's Bar and Grill. Then in fifth place, saw them playing earlier today. It's Bones at Duffy's Bar and Grill. In fourth place, we got Louie at American Legion Shakopee. 
in third place. Bishy24 at Sherry Sports Saloon. Then the big riser of this week from last week's back-to-back -back PGL nights, Bryzo in second place. Went from that eighth place spot, then in the two days uh, last week, moved all the way up to second place, uh, playing at the Underground Bar and Grill. Really good week by Bryzo. Then in first place, we got Lou Bear playing at St. James Eagles Post. You know what I'm interested to see is uh, Bones getting that big win earlier tonight, getting number one overall. We'll see if Bones ends up being a big riser uh, at, coming out of tonight. Well, in uh, those location stands in PGL coming into tonight, we had in 10th place, Wilderness Bar in Big Fork. In 9th place, the Deer Stand in Deerwood. In 8th place, Vicks Bar and Grill in Moorhead. In 7th place, Neeson's Gaylord. In 6th place, Sherry's Sports Saloon in Chatfield. Neighborhood Tavern in Effie in fifth place. Valley Lanes in Spring Valley in fourth place. Roseville VFW moving from second down to third. We'll see if they can regain that second place spot. Um, but I think Cabin, Bar, and Nicolette, I've seen they've been putting out a lot of points tonight. They may have something to say about that. They moved all the way up into second place last night. And then in first place, VFW Northfield. Uh, they've been in first place for a little while now, and we'll see if they can hold on to it almost at 2 million points. They've got themselves a nice little lead over second place, but, uh, uh, but I've already seen Cabin Bar coming in with some strong play tonight. So uh, I don't know until uh, we take a look at those. Oh, yeah. Make sure you're here for Vikings Bingo tomorrow at noon, and we will go over all these standings. Yeah, I'm super interested to see what Cabin Bar, because I know I've seen Cabin Bar being a big big winner tonight and uh, could um, be making a run at VFW Northfield. Well, uh, here we are in our final two games of uh, of this uh, nice sham rockin' Wednesday. I hope they've had as much fun as we have. We've had a blast. Oh, yeah. Well, if you are having a blast, make sure you send in a picture uh, to us if uh, you're just having some fun, win a jackpot with your friends, with your favorite bartender, just having a good time on a St. Patty's Day. Uh, send in a picture to us. We love to see your smiling faces. And uh, you can share those pictures on Facebook or by uh, emailing them to jackpots at pilotgames.com. That is awesome. We love getting those pictures. Um, that's great. Well, still, I'm still uh, just super excited. I was already excited about uh, Delvin Tomlinson uh, being signed at the D tackle spot. Oh, He's yeah. going to be a great three tech, I think, for us. That big body uh, just going to take up, mm -hmm. uh, be a big run stopper. But then when we got the news tonight that uh, just a uh, great player, Patrick Peterson, getting signed a one-year deal uh, to really help solidify that cornerback uh, room and uh, get those young guys up to speed. You got just one of the best cornerbacks oh, yeah. of the decade. And, I mean, he's one of those guys. He really struggled last year um, as, a, as a cornerback. He uh, it just felt like he was, he was getting too many fouls. He was getting beat too much and stuff like that. But you have to think he wasn't with an offensive-minded head coach. Right. He got, he got put in a really young, uh, young system with a lot of young players and stuff like that. I really feel like that uh, he comes over. He, you pair him up with Mike Zimmer, one of the best defensive minds in the in the NFL. I think uh, he's going to completely revamp him back to the old Patrick Peterson we know and love. And I think uh, no matter what, even if Patrick P Peterson is half of what he was before, he's going to be a great mentor towards uh, towards those young DBs. Well, when you're a defensive player on a team like the Arizona Cardinals, so Cliff Kingsbury is a is uh, you know under that he does the air raid system on offense. It really puts a strain on the defensive side of the ball because when they do score, they score fast. When they don't score, they get off the field fast. And so your defense has to spend long stretches on the field. And so especially for an older player, a vet like uh, Patrick Peterson, that can be troublesome. But when you're in a run-centric uh, offense, you got play action pass uh, with Kirk Cousins. The way the offense is set up for the Vikings, that's perfect for a veteran guy like Patrick Peterson. He can get that rest, get back, re rejuvenated, and then play some more good defense. I think he's going to be a perfect fit uh, with the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, I think such a good fit with the Minnesota Vikings, and we've uh, we've really we brought that one guy that you need because because I th I feel like every team needs it, especially if they're going to be a contender level, a guy that you can go. 
you're going to follow this guy all, all around the field. Right. And I think Patrick, Patrick Peterson in the playoffs, maybe not in the regular season, you'd want him to do this all, all yeah. year long. But right. in the playoffs, I believe Patrick Peterson could still shut down like a number one corner and uh, take on that number one receiving responsibility. Yeah, and I think it's also really going to help with, with uh, Tomlinson, Pierce, if we get Hunter uh, back in the fold and we got DJ Wanham, that defensive front is going to help those uh, cornerbacks. Plus, you've got uh, if you've got uh, 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 Kendricks out there, Roman as well, and uh, Anthony Barr out there. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a really nice defensive package. Everybody's helping everybody, and it all starts fitting together well. You already got some great safety play out there as well. So, I mean, it's it's a really nice nicely brings it all together, and uh, and then you got a great coaching staff that really knows how to coach up the defense. And I think it's going to be a great 2021 on the defense side the ball for the Vikings. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, just one more shoe has to drop, and then the defensive picture all comes together. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah we need Hunter. We need Hunter. Completely agree. As soon as we can get that uh, that contract extension uh, with uh, Hunter um, all figured out, however it comes, uh, whether it's uh, paying him a lot of money or uh, or them figuring out a compromise within the contract, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think that if he's on the team, that defense goes from goes from a a good defense mm -hmm. to being an elite defense. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I think Mike Zimmer can do wonders with that kind of defense absolutely uh well under three and a half minutes now left to play in top 10 we got rj 56 16 over at the mad cow in first place mav in second place kcjo in third mickey in fourth in sixth place we got jk and in seventh we got monster pps in eighth we got maloney's and in ninth the red rooster Oh, yeah. Well, our wonderful Minnesota Wild have been on a tear. Um, uh, they took on uh, the Arizona Coyotes last night, won 3-0, to zero, um, uh, getting a, uh, a shutout uh, uh, for the two of the last three games against them and uh, extends uh, our rookie uh, goalkeeper, to a nine game win streak when he's our goalie. Yeah, no, amazing what he's done. Two shutouts in those nine games. And uh, yeah, uh, Kayan, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. he's done a really good job out there. And uh, I mean, 31 saves last night, uh, really. I've just been super impressed with everything he's been done. And the best way to celebrate that is play the number one ETAB game in the state of Minnesota. Let's go wild. It's the game that we partnered up with those Minnesota Wild to uh, uh, to, uh, to really benefit in, in large part um, the youth hockey charities out there, but really all the charities in the state of Minnesota. Oh, yeah, that is for sure. Well, we are just under a minute, uh, two minutes left uh, in this game of uh, top 10. In first place, we got KCJO. In sixth place, Malone. Seventh place, JK. In eighth place, uh, Monster PPS. And in uh, ninth place, we have Red Roosters. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, a we, bunch of really good, really good uh, uh, players. Uh, second place, RJ fifty six sixteen. I've seen uh, them a bunch uh, throughout uh, uh, this broadcast, and uh, they're one of those players that were really good during the PCS season. I always go back to the PCS season because they talked to us a whole bunch, and I remember so many of those players uh, that were talking to us in the chats. But uh, RJ fifty six sixteen, one of those players that uh, absolutely loved during that PCS season. No. Super, super fun. Well, um, we're down to under a minute left in this game. Remember, when this game wraps up, we're going to take a short break. We go, out, We're going to go off air, talk to Mr. Wizard, and then come right back to you guys with a great game of Jackpot Jungle 52 Ball. We're in desperate need of a jackpot in that game. So uh, bring your A game uh, to that because we need to get some money out to you guys. So... Hey, we got Mad Dog, double hat Viking, double hat uh, Mad Dog checking in on the app saying, send some luck. Let's load it up. I'm going to put it in the hands yeah. of our best QB uh, in the studio right now and get that out to you. 
There you go, Mad Dog. There's a bunch of luck to you. Um, uh, don't think that was like a Kirk Cousins throw. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe like a. Uh, a uh, Trey Lance throw. Um, <laughs> Maybe so. Well, you know, uh, I'd love to get hear Mad Dog's thoughts about uh, picking up Patrick Peterson. I think that's going to be a nice addition to the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, maybe that opens up an opportunity for, I think, what would bring a smile to Mad Dog's face, and they draft a uh, first-round quarterback. Oh, yeah, they really did open up that uh, that uh, first-round pick to be more of a luxury pick mm -hmm. uh, just by all the great uh, free, a free agency signings they had. Um, there is KC <coughs> Joe um, winning that at uh, Foster's Dugout Bar in Matombi. Nice, nice, nice. Well... Um, like I say, we are going to get into the rolling scheme here, uh, and we're going to jump off air for just a quick second while we get everything lined up for some jackpot jungle. Yeah. Us to get that work done so that there was enough ice for anybody who wanted to participate, whether it was girls, boys, or even the, the ice skating clubs. The only paid position I ever held was the three years that I was head coach at the Academy of Holy Angels. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. I'm Lynn Olson, and I'm honored to receive the Securian Financial Stick Tap Salute. Lynn's countless hours of volunteer work and dedication has helped grow girls and women's hockey at so many levels that she will be inducted into the USA Hockey Hall of Fame at a ceremony later this year. Congratulations, Lynn. Thanks for everything you do and have done for this amazing sport. As the kids say these days, we are hashtag blessed to have Ryan Carter on our team. And if you missed out on some of the hilarity in his latest episode of Posted Up last night, we've got you covered with a snippet from the show. Live, laugh, and love. Here's a look at this week's Posted Up with Ryan Carter. It's Kirill Kaprizov. He's been playing some pretty good hockey these days. Haven't heard a lot from him, but guess who got a, an exclusive sit down with him? That's right, yours truly. Didn't quite go the way I thought it would though. So a couple of your teammates have said that, that you're dodging the media a little bit and that uh, maybe it's your turn to get in this seat here. Have you been trying to avoid the, the spotlight and, and avoid the media? Hey guys, <laughs> and we are back for some jackpot jungle. We got the total prizes of close to almost four thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars. Um, super exciting stuff. Yeah, I was I was enjoying watching that uh, wild amplified uh, during the break. There, uh, super fun uh, information that we get uh, due to our partnership with. The Minnesota Wild, oh, yeah. I love that. And I did notice, you know, one thing that hockey players are always known for is their great hair. You kind of have hockey hair. I do kind of have hockey hair right now. Yeah. I, I like it. I, I, I've had fun growing it out. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never grown my hair out quite this long. And, uh, and it's, it's been a really fun phase. I probably would have never done it if it wasn't for a pandemic. But, uh, but it's been super fun while I've been growing it out. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I was watching that and I was going, man, these guys got great hair. But, uh, yeah, it's such yeah. as it is when you're dealing with hockey players, That's kinda, they always have great hair. Kind of how you get stumbled up all the time because you just look over here and you go, wow, great hair, and then you forget what you're talking about. Yeah, I know, about, and I forget and what I I get conflamped, and then I and don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, but, that's, uh, that's what happens. Well, um, do you want to tell you what also gets me conflamped is all <laughs> the money that uh, we give to charities here at Pilot. $25 million in 2020. Yeah, $25 yeah. Million in 2020. It was absolutely awesome. In a pandemic year – you guys were still able to give out so much money uh, to so many uh, uh, charities across your community. And uh, that's why we love, love to highlight these charity spotlights. 
Yeah, so uh, our charity spotlight this week is their 102nd birthday. Woo-woo, happy Woo. 102nd birthday. Yeah, yeah, it looks good on you, American Legion. To enhance the well-being of America's veterans, their families, our military, and our communities by their devotion to mutual helpfulness. They're doing a great job out there in our communities. And as they did turn 102, they did ask us to celebrate by checking on a buddy. Here we are. We got uh, balls about to drop here in our last game of the night. It's Jackpot Jungle 52 ball. We're super excited about getting this rolling. Yeah, no, can't wait to get this rolling. Let's see. Here, I'm going to move this right here. And uh, there we are in the, in the corner. Yeah, Tony just said, don't worry. Uh, it takes a little bit. So I'm glad we're in. We're rolling. We're working on this as we go. We got a B5. Oh, I got the old ball calls. Here we go. All right. N37, more than 11. I, I haven't done this in a long time here. B12, one dozen. Oh, these ball calls are super fun. I, yeah. I love hearing Nikki do the ball calls. I am convinced she doesn't even have a list in front of her, and she just knows it by heart. She does. Uh, that is 068, Saving Grace. And I-29, let's see here, Rise and Shine. We always would hit the Rise and Shine. By, you know, good. Ah. It was this creepy good morning. That's, that, that does sound very creepy. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, as we're going uh, through this, we were talking about American Legion. There's a bunch of locations. Oh, there we go. Sportman and Caleb splitting that uh, line prize of $38. Caleb playing at Tony's Saloon and Sportman playing at Bootleggers Piers. Uh, oh, in the, in the town of Piers. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to go over uh, these locations that all support the American Legion. It's uh, American Legion Frid Fridley and Wilmar. Uh, then we got Corner Bar, American Legion Lynchfield and, and Glenwood, uh, Hayfield Legion Post, uh, Stillwater Legion Post, St. Peter's Legion Post, uh, Hobbers Bar, uh, American Legion Post, St. Michael's, uh, Clearwater Legion Post, Stewartville Legion Post, Landing on Madison, The Point, Austin Lege, Legion Post, Windrift Lounge, and Pine Island Legion Post, all supporting the Legion Post. And there's so many more that support it as well. And uh, we just thank all the American Legions for supporting such a wonderful charity. And uh, shoot a little bit of luck to you guys for this entire week. Absolutely. Well, N31 just fell. Get up and run. And G52, Danny LaRue, as we're working through a large M-shaped pattern where B's and O's matter a lot, I's and G's uh, matter a little, and N's don't matter at all. Is Danny LaRue a, a, a real person? Yeah, I think Danny LaRue is a famous person over in oh. England. Oh, it's a singer. Okay, yeah, it's an Irish singer and entertainer, so really uh, good for today, especially for because it's St. Patty's Day. There you go. Uh, like to be relevant and uh, sometimes just uh, stumble uh, and fall right on top of luck, which is uh, applicable to today. All right, so uh, as we're rolling through this game, we've had a great sham rocking Wednesday with you guys. Had a bunch of jackpots. We've had a great time. Uh, we've had some great news uh, from the Vikings. Patrick Peterson getting signed during the broadcast. Yeah, that was uh, an awesome, awesome pickup. I'm sure I'm going to be talking about that for the next few days. Yeah. Uh, just uh, super excited about the addition of an elite cornerback in Patrick Peterson. We got a great day tomorrow again for you guys. We'll be here for Vikings uh, Bingo to kind of start off the day at noon of our broadcasting schedule. Of course, then we'll play uh, 25 cent jackpot hunter from one till four. Then at four o'clock, we'll be coming in with some one dollar jackpot hunter from uh, four to five uh, of our first hour of happy hours. Then Cash Crew Two will come in from uh, five to six. 
race. Um, and then we'll play a 50 cent jackpot hunter from six all the way till 10 o'clock tomorrow night. It's gonna be a great day of bingo tomorrow. Um, so, uh, but uh, this was a great St. Patrick's Day. Um, just had so much fun with everybody oh, yeah. here in the pilot family. It's been uh, amazing. Oh, it's been great. And about a month and a half into the season, we are already over 100 jackpots given out. That is crazy. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's been absolutely craziness, especially once since we expanded that bingo schedule. Just jackpots have been going out every single day, all the time, every single day. Literally, you can come into any of your bars at any time and win a jackpot. It's craziness. Uh, there's G55, Snakes Alive. So I uh, love these old-fashioned ball calls. I remember when we used to do this on all the broadcasts. It was super, super fun. We got 066, clickety-click. Yeah, these these ball calls are, are are really fun. Actually, I I am totally not used to it. To uh, to think that you guys did it all the time is is almost weird to think about. <laughs> it is. I twenty six pick and mix and N forty four droopy drawers. That one's always funny, especially if you're a fifth grader. Oh, look at there. There's the number one player in Minnesota in oh. PGL, Lou Bear, out there playing uh, right now. On the leaderboard. Good to see out there Lou Bear and all of our players getting after it here in some jackpot jungle. I love Jackpot Jungle. This is what we used to play a ton of on broadcast. Yeah, so, yeah, no, it's a it's a super fun game and uh, super intense as you actually get to like kind of watch as the actual balls. Where in uh, Jackpot Hunter, it's just so fast. It's uh, you don't really keep up with it. It's kind of like boom, 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 and then right. it's like surprise jackpot. Right. And then, and, but here you kind of get to watch. You're like you're like oh, it looks like this person's close to maybe getting the jackpot. Maybe this person will win the jackpot, and uh, you get to kind of see like the horse race in it absolutely yeah no super super fun um yeah kind of getting back to the roots here oh 62 turn the screw yeah, i see it malone's out there malone's has been one of the top players all night long uh just killing it yep uh nicely done yeah, well, we've had a super fun time with the prime time bets, pinning some locations against each other. Yeah. We'll get those results in probably tomorrow. Yeah, probably so, that we'll get all, who won in, in all those. So far, though, we'll tell you this, our top location right now in uh, was Tony Saloon for the night. Wow. Uh, 190,000 points out there for Tony Saloon. JC's Bar and Grill coming in second with 186,000 points. Boulevard Bar and Grill in third with 176,000 points. American Legion Moorhead, 166,890 points. In fifth place, Cabin Bar with 165,880 points. That's a ton of points in one uh, sham rockin' Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Well, a bunch of people now one ball away uh, could win this at any time now. Uh, definitely would need to win it soon if they want a chance to get this coverall. And look at I say it, it happens. CT victory and CT big money uh, splitting that large M. And let's see if we can get out this uh, coverall jackpot of $4,666. Yeah, we got to hit this in 52 balls. This is a 52 ball uh, jackpot jungle. I'm going to get a little more serious about these ball calls. Uh, we got G54 clean the floor. Oh, yeah. Well, a bunch of people five balls away right now. Oh, 65, old age pension. Well, look at there's crack. Uh, TJ, well, now a bunch of people joining them, and it could be anyone. Oh, 67, made in heaven. Yeah, let's see. As we're closing in on 50 balls drawn, we're at 49 right now. And 34, ask for more. And people are still five balls away. It's going to be a tough win. Uh, it would have to be a lot of really lucky uh, draws right here. But oh, could oh. happen. Oh, 70, three score and 10. And N33, dirty knee. 
Yeah, when you're a kid, if you don't come back from outside with a dirty knee, I feel like you didn't play hard enough. Absolutely correct. B13, unlucky for some. That's actually a lucky number for me. I think 13 is a very lucky number. Uh, we got 073, Queen B. Well, that moves us over uh, to the Musco prize of $57 on that Musco coverall. G49, P, C. B14, Valentine's Day. Yeah, let's see. Uh, we got uh, Zai, Crack, TJ, Merzen, uh, all one ball away right now. Uh, one lucky ball could get them the win. G58. Oops, I. Garden Gate. Is that right? No, this is uh, Make Them Wait. I think we used to say Garden Gate. Lycia, Lycia over at Valley Lanes in Spring Valley taking that $57 Musco coverall. Um, and uh, that concludes a sham rock and Wednesday, but we're yeah. not done with broadcasting. We still do have 50 cent uh, jackpot hunter happening until 10 o'clock tonight. And hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your St. Patrick's Day. We've had a blast with you. Oh yeah, enjoy those deals that are going out. Drink your green beer, but most importantly, remember when you play pilot games, your community wins. Have a good night, guys. Bye guys. If I get it to work. Yeah. Eat some corned beef and, and cabbage. Uh, that Guinness. Uh